on the front range. Lobos and Rams next. is the site in beautiful Fort Collins, Colorado. 52nd meeting in a series dating back to 1935. New Mexico taking on Colorado State. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Trey Bender alongside Kelly Stopper for this one. There are some similarities between these two teams with a lot riding on the conference race. Both loves rushing the football and both play sound defense as well. Yeah, and both teams come in with a great deal of confidence, Trey. But one team is going to leave today out of the conference race. We'll see who that is. David Anderson, the junior wideout for the Rams. So good. First team all Mountain West. Does, does so much more than catching the football. Colorado State wants to run the ball, but they have to find a way to get Anderson in the mix. This is one way. Turn something very little into something very big. Yards after the catch. But he does a great job of blocking downfield, turning the little run into a touchdown. They need a lot of big plays. Trey, the fact is, he's not going to catch a lot of balls throughout this year playing a freshman quarterback. They have to find a way to keep their playmaker involved. On the Lobos side, junior Don Trell Moore, an All-America candidate, the Mountain West Conference career rushing leader. And he has simply worn out the Rams in his first two seasons. You can see the rushing yards a year ago. He averages well over 200 yards in two football games. If Colorado State lets him get off like they have the last two years, it's going to be a long afternoon. We're geared up. The Mountain West Conference Game of the Week here in Fort Collins. Back Cole McKamey, who's getting better every week going for New Mexico. Rams countering with freshman quarterback Caleb Haney, a run pass threat. Kickoff is next. Auto care centers, Napa, get the good stuff. Conoco, next time you're empty, fill up with Conoco Quality Pro Clean Gasolines. Pioneer Pure Vision Las Vegas Bowl. Join the Pac-10 in the Mountain West on December 23rd. For tickets, log on to lvbowl.com. And by Sonic, it's not just good, it's Sonic good. Let's take a look now at our keys to the game, brought to you by Napa Auto Care Centers. And for Colorado State, they have to run, run, and run some more. They have to run early and often to be effective, and they have to keep the ball in front of them in pass coverage. And for New Mexico, they have to force Haney to beat them. They have to take away the running game and force this freshman quarterback to get it done, and they have to get Dontrell loose early, out in space primarily. The third member of her broadcast team, Anne Marie Anderson, she has more on Dontrell Moore. Well, Kelly was saying earlier that Dontrell Moore loves to play the Rams. Yes, he does. And he's just a great running back, period. As a junior, he's already the Mountain West Conference all-time career rushing leader. Meanwhile, offensive coordinator Dan Dodd says, yes, he's their number one tailback or running back, but he's also their number two receiver, which is a bit of a surprise to this team. So while he may see the ball 30 to 40 times, we don't know how it's going to be delivered to him. Yeah, what's interesting about that, Trey, is it's a double threat now, and over 430 yards have already gone off the board from him. Kevin Mark kicks it away, a booming kick with a little bit of a wind at his back through the back of the end zone. And New Mexico, after winning the toss, wanting the football first, will start first down from their 20-yard line. We will keep a close look on Moore and also this guy, the quarterback, Cole McKamey, just a sophomore, outstanding speed on the option and on the scramble. They think he's getting better and better and also doing a good job with clock management. They think he has a chance to be very good at that quarterback position. From Artesia, New Mexico, has completed 49% of his passes. New Mexico and Colorado State getting underway here in Fort Collins. Beautiful weather, sunny skies after windy conditions yesterday. And McKamey on first down, hands it off to Moore, the guy we talked about, and short yardage, a yard, and that's about it. Let's take a look at the skill people for New Mexico. They have a bruiser at fullback in Adrian Bird, one of the tops in the conference. 22 knockdown blocks on the year. Ryan Cook, one of the biggest centers and one of the best in the country. First team all Mountain West Conference, Lombardi candidate. They are massive on that line, averaging 6'8 and close to 330 pounds. New Mexico 
after the short game by Moore, facing a second and nine now, and they have a two receiver set this time. Moore taking the hand up, breaks one up the middle, and he has a first down across the 30 to the 32 yard line. So good in open space. Let's take a look at the Rams defensively. They're very good. Young on that right side with Smith and Nathan. Both are redshirt freshmen getting better. The linebacker's a little bit beat up. Courtney Jones battling a bad neck. Atkins is the big play guy. And in the secondary, Stratton, their leader, 55 tackles on the year, leads the team. Honorable mention, all Mountain West Conference. After the big game by Moore, two carries and a first down for New Mexico at their 31-yard line. This time they break the backfield power set. Moore, the lone back, three receivers split to the near side of the field. McCamey setting up a screen to the other side. It's caught by Basket, and he has a first down across the far side as he takes it across the 42-yard line. Basket, the Mountain West Conference champion in the high jump. Yeah, he's a very good athlete, but he's also becoming a very good receiver. They single him to the weak side a lot, and they're just trying to simply get the football in his hands and then let him go make a big play. Look at those numbers, Kelly, a big, strong target, and he is clearly their go-to guy when they do put it in the air. 6'4", 220, and he high jumps seven feet. That's amazing. And he's tough in traffic, you can imagine, with that leaping ability. On first down, now McKinney drops back to throw. Looking, and he overshoots his intended receiver, the tight end, Logan Hall, who they feel has the best hands of their tight end core. And Dan Dodd told us that last night, the offensive coordinator from New Mexico, that they feel Logan is that tight end that brings that added dimension to their offense, simply receiving the football. But McCamey has to throw an accurate pass. He was wide open. This team's so good running the ball, Kelly. We talked about it, but they will break formation and put the ball in the air to keep some teams off balance. And that's really the key is keeping them off balance. They have a devastating running game between Moore and this massive offensive line. And if McCamey can just be a little efficient, this is going to be a very good offense. This time a little bit more of a traditional set with more the lone running back. They have Travis Brown and Marcus Smith in there, and it's going to be Smith. Their flyback taking it to the near side, and he picks up four yards. That is his 10th carry of the year. He does it from the receiver position, very effective. Yeah, they call that their fly sweep series, and it's simply a quick motion. They snap it when he's behind the quarterback, give it to him. Dontrell Moore and two linemen are leading outside. He's always the one that does it. Mark, Marcus Smith, number four, is always the receiver that they use for that series. Top flight speed for Smith, Southern California native. He'll also catch the ball from time to time at that receiver position. Third and four now. Two receivers to the top. Moore is the lone running back. Just shy of the midfield stripe. Opening series here from Sonny Lubick Field in Fort Collins. Key game in the Mountain West. It's going to be more on the delay, and the Rams shut it down. They were ready for that draw play, and coming up in the middle was Adam Lancicero, the senior, plug in the hole. Nathan Pauley also from his linebacker spot. And Steve Stainer, the defensive coordinator you see on the screen right there, said if it's third and five or less, this is still pro predominantly a running football team, just like we saw the draw right there on that play. So Tyler Goss, the junior from San Diego, who's been very effective pinning teams deep, 20 inside the 20 this year, will kick it away. David Anderson, the dangerous guy we talked about in the open, standing inside his 10 for Colorado State. A high kick. Anderson calling fair catch, and he makes it at the 20-yard line. So New Mexico's initial series stopped short of midfield, and Colorado State will get their hands on the football for the first time here. Caleb Haney, freshman, football junkie. They love his ability to just play smart. Has a tremendous grasp of the game for a freshman. He's a run-pass threat and a guy that uh, really showed a lot of uh, composure in that victory, that impressive win to capture the bronze boot against Wyoming. We'll start this series from the 20-yard line. Anderson is the motion man. Going to throw Anderson's way. Far side has a block. And he has a first down across the 30, out to the 32-yard line tackle made by Josh Bazinet, the strong safety. And this offensive crew is very good, and Joel Dreesen is a second-team All-Mountain West guy. John Mackey, candidate, the H-back. He can break plays in the open field. The offensive line 
is getting better. Albert Bimper, a 303 pounder, is good, but Outland Trophy guy in pairs on that right tackle spot for the Rams. First down after the Anderson catch as they waste little time getting the ball in the hands of their best athlete. Shotgun formation this time for Haney. From Forney, Texas, looking. Backside pressure, gets rid of it. It's caught by Corey Sperry. Sperry has a first down and more. And he's in the New Mexico territory to the 48-yard line. The freshman from Pueblo getting better and better, and they are really excited about his potential. And we talk about they need to come out and run football, run it some more, and they come out and throw the ball twice. What you have to do against this tenacious and relentless New Mexico defense, who are very quick up front, but they're also small, you have to do a lot of misdirection. And you not only do it in the running game, but you do it in the passing game like they have thus far. Charles Brown was on the blitz from his safety position, and Haney got rid of it just in time. First down now at the 47. Jimmy Green is the lone running back, coming off a huge game last week, straight ahead for a couple as he noses it up to the 45-yard line. The Lobos defense very active. They'll come at you from all angles. Everoy Thompson, Mountain West Conference Defensive Player of the Week against San Diego State. Linebackers, though, are their best. Nick Spiegel is an old school guy and leads the team with 63 tackles. And in the secondary, corners are excellent. Payne leads the nation in pass breakups this season. Second down, seven from the 44. Jimmy Green coming off. The 124-yard effort against Wyoming had a touchdown in that game in the backfield. He'll get the handoff, and he cracks it inside the tackles, inside the 40, and close to a first down. Charles Brown, the tackle at the 38-yard line. And what Colorado State wants to do, they want to run the zone play, which this is to the left. They have to block the backside. And you saw right there that Sperry was that tight end on the right side, blocking that backside because New Mexico is so quick off the edges, they run down zone plays from the back a lot. There's what he did against the Pokes. What an effort. He will alternate with oldest Yonarice at that running back spot. He's the power back, though. Uh, Yonarice more of the shifty type. Both are very effective. It was a first down carry inside the 37. So the officials will talk things over here. I like the blend so far as far as Colorado State's offense. They're, they came out, they threw the ball two times before they ever ran it. And then the running game, they're either going to go balanced and run away from clock the clock. Operator, pressure. please reset the play clock to 25 seconds. Game clock will start on the snap. They're either going to go balanced like they are right now on the offensive front and just run away from the overload, or they're going to block the overload and run right in the mouth of it. This time, two receivers to the top, and there's the motion man, Dreesen, who will set up in the backfield next to Green. On first down, play action. Haney rolling out, has plenty of time. He's going deep downfield for Osborne. Touchdown, Colorado State. The little roll off the play action, it worked brilliantly, and Haney has his second touchdown pass as a Colorado State Ram. And this play was actually set up over the last two weeks, if you can believe it. They have a receiver in the flat, a receiver running an over or an out route, and then the post. This is the first time that the young quarterback has ever thrown to the post on that route. They've been setting it up for two weeks now, Trey. 36-yard strike, Osborne's second touchdown catch this season. What a start for the Rams as Jeff Babcock nails the extra point. The freshman from Forney, Texas, connecting with Osborne, the sophomore, on the touchdown strike. 7-0 Rams. The home team looking good here in the early stages, a 7-0 lead for the Rams on a big touchdown pass. The freshman, Caleb Haney, hooking up with Dustin Osborne from 36 yards out. And Haney getting better and better. I know you, you like this guy's potential, and he just seems to grasp the system. It's amazing at, at, at such an early stage in his career. Well, the, the key is, he's like you said at the top, Trey, he's a student of the game. And so if you can build that foundation mentally, it's a lot easier to just go out and react physically. Kevin Mark to kick it away again. And another booming kick over the head of the tandem for New Mexico. Smith and Walton will have to watch it. And a touchback they'll start at the 20-yard line. There's a look at the scoring drive, and they really mixed it up well, I thought, before that Osborne touchdown catch. Five plays, and three of them were pass plays. And a good, good success in the running game. They picked up a good first down. And you can see, if they get off to a start, 
a good start. They can. This is actually show, showing the third quarter, but there's a statistic where over well over 90 percent, if they score on the first drive of the game, they go on to win. And his defense has been so good in uh, through the years here at Colorado State, and uh, that's part of the reason they've had such a great record. Here's a handoff on a delay to Moore and shut down after a short gain out to the 23-yard line. Atkins was in from his linebacker spot on the tackle for the Rams. There's what they do after the opening drive. That's impressive. And then they finish things with strong fourth quarter. Yeah, no question. They make good adjustments at halftime. If they're leading after the third quarter, as we just saw, they're basically unbeatable. But they get off to a quick start like they did, and things are going to go well. Lubick, four-time Mountain West Conference Coach of the Year. Eight bulls in ten seasons. They've been to five straight. Hoping to make it six, but they need a victory here against New Mexico. Have a chance at that. On second down and seven, the option game now to the far side. McKamey's going to keep it, and he's going to be just shy of the first down, showing pretty good speed. The sophomore on the carry there. And that's really what Colorado State was afraid of coming in. Let's check in with Ann Marie. Guys, I just listened in as New Mexico head coach Rocky Long pulled his defense together, pulled out the grease board, and told them in words that weren't as kind as this. Now, that isn't at all what they had talked about, what they just did on defense. He re-diagrammed some things from the guys, explained to them where they were supposed to be, and missed coverage, and said, you guys need to get it together. And again, he didn't use those words. You knew he'd get after him, Kelly. Oh, no question. He's an intense individual. Good carry by McKinney, sets up a third and three, and it's going to be more to the outside. Nobody was there, and he breaks a big one up near midfield, and it appeared that they totally closed off the side. Lance Cicero on the tackle, but he was running free for about 10 yards, Kelly. Yeah, and Dontrell Moore is actually known as a cutback runner. That time, he kind of pressed at the point of attack, and at the last second, he bounced outside, and Colorado State just didn't secure the edge very well. 21 yards on that carry for Moore, who had... 242, three touchdowns last year, and look at what he has done in his career. He just rises to the occasion against these guys. He obviously likes something in his 4-3 Tampa 2 style of defense. 39 career touchdowns, school record holder in that category, this time a yard, and that's about it. Atkins was in there along with Jamal Hall, the junior strong side linebacker. Let's look at number two. Both teams are moving the football here in the first quarter. It's interesting to see what New Mexico is really going to settle into um, in, in terms of what they want to accomplish today. They, they're very diversified, and sometimes they really lose what they should be doing, and that's pounding behind this big offensive line with Dontrell Moore. Raleigh and Carter are the receivers to the near side for McKinney and the Lobos. Again, Moore in at that single running back spot on second down and eight more. Sidesteps one man. Flag is thrown as he takes it to the far side of the field and out of bounds at the Colorado State 44-yard line. They would like to run it. 70% of the time. But uh, we will see some different formations. Carl Richens with the call up coming here. And that wipes out a pretty good run by Moore. Yeah, and Moore showed on that play exactly what Colorado State is afraid of. His elusiveness, Sonny Lubick made a point of saying that last year they had a couple of guys a handful of times ready to tackle him. Illegal formation offense, number 87. Not enough middle line of scrimmage. Five-yard penalty, repeat second down. And they had opportunities to tackle him, and they missed, and he went on to run the ball for big plays. They have to get him on the ground, and they have to get a lot of hats on him early and be physical with this young man. Yeah, they, in fact, uh, they uh, would like to hit him hard, and uh, they, they don't think he likes contact maybe as much as, as nobody likes contact. But, I'm uh, not so <laughs> sure he doesn't like contact, but they definitely have to get more than one hat on him. Third, uh, second down and 13 now for the penalty. Carter was a guilty party, the wide receiver on that last play. Three receivers set, handoff, and it goes to Dee Dee Cox. He takes it into Colorado State territory and down to the 45. And this guy, very effective, a decisive downhill runner who spells more from time to time. And this is really a page out of Utah's playbook, the option, and Dee Dee Cox, the backup running back who is actually a very good running back in his own right he would start on most teams in this country 
and you don't start when you're on the same team with Dontrell Moore, but they can't let D.D. Cox carry the football well and expect to contain Moore. Yeah, he has a great burst of speed. You see his numbers, had a shoulder that bothered him against UNLV, but averages four yards a carry. Third and three here. McCamey play action in trouble, throws, completes the pass, but it's going to be short of the first down. Caught by the tight end, Mike Augustiniak, but Colorado State brought pressure that time, and they did a great job, and that will force the punt. Smith was in there on the quarterback. Yeah, Blake Smith, number 97, does a great job. A quarterback contained right there, show up in his face quickly, make him make a quick decision, resulted in a bad throw, resulted in a fourth down punt once again. So the blitz from the Rams, we expected to see that from the Lobos. The Rams bringing it, and Tyler Goss, the two-year starter, will punt to that man, David Anderson. Anderson standing on his 10-yard line, a 7-0 Colorado State lead on a Caleb Haney touchdown pass here in the first quarter. Long count, wobbly kick, Anderson calling fair catch, now he'll back away from it, and it will bounce out of bounds. So the Rams get the football back, they'll start the next series, first down from their 11. Colorado State in front by a touchdown. Front of New Mexico, 7-0, Colorado State first down from their 11-yard line after forcing a punt. Thus far it has been the freshman quarterback, Caleb Haney, impressing. Three of three, 70 yards and a touchdown pass. And he's got the football back for the green and gold. Jimmy Green is in as the lone running back. Important game. Colorado State trying to stay in second place in the Mountain West Conference, just behind Utah. Long count. Haney gives to Green and he's shut down in the backfield as New Mexico was ready there. Let's check in with Ann Marie. You guys talked about Caleb Haney being a student of the game. Sonny Lubick says he's never seen somebody so young study so much film. Remember, Haney's only a freshman, and he was here this summer coming in every day studying film. He did the same thing this fall well before he knew he was going to start. And offensive coordinator Dan Hammerschmidt is on the field today. He's on the sidelines. Usually Hammerschmidt's up in the box. He wants to be close to his quarterback, much as he was last week versus Wyoming. So the injured Justin Holland is actually going to be up in the box today and probably will talk to Haney at halftime. You played with Dan Kelly, and uh, they're facing a faster pace against the Lobos. But this, this zone offense, talk about uh, what, what they expect from Haney in this thing. Well, we just saw it on that last play. And a balanced look, he wants to check away from the pressure. He didn't do a very good job that last play. But uh, basically, you want to go away from the overload that New Mexico is famous for. Second down and 12 after the loss on the carry by Green. Haney near his goal line. He's going to keep it. And he takes it up to the original line of scrimmage, the 11-yard line. And this is exactly, Trey, the situation that Dan Hammerschmidt, the offensive coordinator, wants to stay out of. You're backed up. Now it's going to be third and 10. And rest assured that New Mexico is going to bring a whole bunch of people on this freshman quarterback right here. Fala Fashola, the senior, tackled Haney on that last play. And this will be a test on third and 10. They like to blitz their linebackers. They'll blitz their safeties. They'll come from the edges. And let's see how the Rams deal with it. They have Anderson split to the top of the screen. And alert the quarterback draw right here is a number one play against this type of pressure. From the gun, Haney with some pressure over the middle incomplete. Threw that in no man's land as he was knocked to the turf. Dreesen was closest to the football. It's fourth down. Well, you have the right guy right there. Dreesen was crossing underneath, and the linebackers just simply held him up. They, Colorado State was thinking they were going to get a holding penalty, but that's why it looked like he was thrown over there to Hammerschmidt on the sideline. Jeff Babcock grows a candidate as a kicker, a Ray Guy Award candidate as a punter. He averages, as you see, over 42 as a long of... 59 this year. They'd love to get that right here. Daniel Ramirez is the deep man standing near midfield for New Mexico. Babcock gets it away, and it's a beauty. No win behind him. He crushes it inside the 20, and that ball is going to make it into the end zone. What a kick for Babcock, his season long, and that one gets him out of trouble in a hurry. Big plays come in a lot of different ways, and there won't be a bigger play today than that right there. Early in this game, when New Mexico is kind of playing a, a field position type of football game offensively right now, that takes them right out of their field position by an absolute bazooka punt. 90 yards, and that's the longest in Colorado State history. I can imagine. <laughs> How can you get much longer than that? 
He had the spiral, and that ball turned over, and McKamey and the Lobos will start again for the third straight time from their 20-yard line. They thought they'd be setting up near midfield. Dontrell Moore, the All-America candidate, will get the handoff on first down, sidesteps a couple men, and then gets a couple, maybe three, out to the 23-yard line as a tackle's made by Ben Stratton, the free safety. And Trey, that is New Mexico's version of the zone run right there. It's just basically the offensive line come off as a wall, and then they they double team at the line of scrimmage and then go off to the second level to the linebackers, and the running back simply looks for the first same. Dontrell Moore likes to cut it back. Colorado State, as of right now, are doing a very good job of holding down the backside edge. They love the power game. They run the option and play action, option pass off of that. This time they're going to throw the football with McKamey going down the middle. And the catch made for a first down by Hank Basket. And then the ball comes free. They say incomplete at the 45. He took quite a shot. And there goes Ben Stratton again. Coming out of his free safety position in the middle of the field and just daring a wide receiver to try to catch the ball over the middle. There's a young man down at Wyoming that didn't fare too well a week ago, getting hit right in the chops. And this is what a free safety does. Break on the ball from the middle of the field and make it tough for the guy to hang on to the ball. And Basket can't do it on that point. You know, it doesn't seem to bother Stratton as Basket appears to be a little bit shaken up and you can understand why. Stratton has a disc, he has ankle issues. He doesn't care, he brings it. You couldn't see it on that play. <laughs> And now, because of that big hit, it's third and seven for the Lobos. Three receivers set. They have split backs, and a penalty flag is dropped on the far side. I think we're going to get that not enough men on the line of scrimmage once again. Dead ball. False start. Offense number 87. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. It's Anthony Carter. Rocky Long. Leaving Disgusting. a little bit too early, but this is the problem that you have when really you're a power running football team and then you're trying to do a lot of formation and you get players in situations out on the field and in positions that they're not used to being and the last thing they're thinking about is the snap count. Carter again will be split to the top and they go split backs and this time third and 12 for the Lobos from their 18 yard line. They've moved the ball, but no points thus far. Stepping up in the pocket, McKinney going to run with it, and he's going to be well short of the first down as he's double teamed and dropped at the 24-yard line. Jamal Hall of the linebacker stops him short, and they'll punt it again. And Colorado State defensively that time got the best of both worlds. They got pressure on the quarterback with only bringing four on the rush, flush the quarterback out, and then rally up on him and make a play before he can pick up the first down. David Anderson and Damon Morton deep for the Rams. There's Anderson. They'll wait on the punt from Tyler Goss, the junior from San Diego. Big Colorado State record 89-yard punt by Babcock backing up the Lobos, and Goss now trying to turn the tables on the other side. He averages over 40 a kick. This one hangs up there, wobbly kick. Anderson slides in and makes the catch at the 42-yard line. The Rams have it back, and they have the lead. Haney touchdown pass, the only scoring thus far for Fort Collins. Welcome back to the Mountain West Conference Game of the Week in Fort Collins, Colorado. Beautiful weather conditions. Colorado State, the home team looking good, leading the Lobos from Albuquerque, 7-0. Caleb Haney and the Rams offense looking very sharp. The freshman from Forney, Texas, has a touchdown pass. He leads them up there with good field position on this drive from the 43. They shift two tight ends, Martindale and Drees into the top of the screen. They'll pitch that way. Jimmy Green spins away from a tackle and gets a yard, and that's about it. Good pursuit that time from the Lobos. Stay with us for our ESPN Plus halftime report. We'll take a look at the ESPN USA Today scoreboard, stats and highlights, and then an interesting piece, CSU's receiving core, David Anderson and Joel Dreesen. They are two of the best and real leaders out there on the football field. Yeah, their leadership really is more valuable than their ability to catch a football at this point with a freshman quarterback. They're having to get a lot out of the running game. Anderson in motion. Bunches up tight as a handoff to Green, and he shut down. And they really filled the gaps that time. Evroy Thompson, the junior from Hockley, Texas, 
who had six tackles, two and a half tackles for loss, a sack and a forced fumble. Conference player of the week against San Diego State in his last game. And that play right there is indicative of what you see out of this New Mexico defense. He's actually the defensive end, and he ended up making a play over the ball almost as a nose tackle because they line stunt so much. It's not where they start, it's where they finish. And they're not big. He's 247, but as you mentioned, uh, positioning and anticipation is so good. Third down, 11, Haney tipped and incomplete. He wanted Anderson near the 43-yard line, but the ball tipped at the line of scrimmage. And Colorado State did a very good job that time of going max protection. That simply means that they kept their tight ends and only had really a one-man, maybe two-man route. And you can see Anderson right there, but a good job by the defensive end. Actually, it was Spiegel, number 89, watching the quarterback's eyes and getting his hands up in that throwing lane. Babcock, after booming a school record punt, will kick it to number 36 in your screen, Daniel Ramirez. Babcock has... Had seven kicks inside the 20 this season. He'll try to place this one there. Hangs it up. And a fumbled football picked up finally by Ramirez. Still going with it. He has a block. And somehow turns that into a fine return out to the 30-yard line with a great second effort. New Mexico coming in four and four under Rocky Long. Two and two in conference play. The last meeting between these two is a barn burner in Albuquerque. More. More and more of more, actually. Van Pelt, of course, was huge for the Rams. That's the play of the game. Took his eyes off the shotgun snap. They go down, if Kyle Coulter falls on that, this is the game winner right here. Off the foot of Wes Zucker, a 37-34 win for the Lobos. Moore had the huge game, uncharacteristic for Van Pelt to fumble in that situation. What a career he had, though, at Colorado State, following a great line of quarterbacks, including the guy next to me, Kelly Stauffer. Hand off to Moore, and he breaks one across the 35 and close to the 40-yard line. It'll set up a second and short from there. Defensive coordinator Steve Stannard, Sonny Lubick, they both talked about the ability and the need to get this young man on the ground when you have a shot. They had a shot that time at the line of scrimmage, but if you don't get him early, he's going to make you pay. 1935, Kelly, and you know about this a rivalry between these two. Colorado State with Sonny Lubick, of course, taking it to another level, naming the field after him, and it's amazing what he has done here. Six conference titles, most of any Mountain West Conference coach, and the bowl games year after year. Here's a handoff again to Moore. Has the first down. Jonathan Simon with the tackle, the nose tackle, but it's a first down at the 41. Look at those uh, numbers. And just a great, warm guy, great person, great personality. It's amazing, he's already been here for 12 years. I actually told him I just got to the point of forgiving him because he recruited me here and then left after my junior year. And so I didn't have him for my senior year, and I believe we suffered mightily because of it. <laughs> but now you're on us speaking to Yeah, again. we are. And then some. Forgiving him. We have a timeout called by New Mexico here with 2.01 to go in the first quarter. But uh, he really has his program running, has a five-point philosophy he talks about, and uh, respect is one of those things in there. Keeping winning and losing in perspective is in there. But uh, four 10-plus win seasons, that is getting it done. Yeah, it really is. Bobby Bowden would be at the top of that list with about 26 of them, I believe. But the thing is, is a football team before long, if the head coach is here long enough, become really a reflection of the coach himself. And you see that in this team. They're relentless. They're very hard-nosed. They don't give up. They're disciplined, the least penalized team in this conference, and actually the second least penalized team in the entire country. And that's all because of that man right there. And that's really no different than the head coaches around the conference and around the nation, as a matter of fact. Let's hear from Anne Marie. Well, a little more on Sunny Lubick Field at Hughes Stadium. You know, they added 4,400 uh, permanent seats in the end zone next year. They're going to do a new playing surface. They say that Lubick keeps going back and forth between whether he wants grass or some kind of turf. 12 seats, a club seating area, a press box. Coach Lubick joked that after 10 consecutive winning seasons, the pressure's really on now because he worries, he says, that if he doesn't produce a good season, they're going to take his name off the field. <laughs> That's not happening, I'll tell you what. I don't think so. 
You know, he's produced five All-Americans, six conference players of the year. I mean, the, the accolades, the list just goes on and on. First down from the 41 for New Mexico. They go with that stack set again at receiver on the near side. Swing the pass to the other side of the field to Hank Basket, and he breaks the tackle and gets it across midfield, close to a first down at the Rams' 49-yard line. We can see Basket up at the top. He's isolated. They do that a great deal. Good job of getting those big offensive linemen out in front of him. And they call that their, their quick side. Terex Pennington, 79, Fred Tucker, 62. The quick side usually simply means the short side of the field, and that's why those guys, big old guys, 300-plus pounders, can get out there very fast. You can see uh, uh, that, that line there, Pennington, number 79, and he goes 6'7", 329. And that's pretty much common. They're all about that big up front for the Lobos. Massive, if not the biggest, one of the biggest in the country. Handoff. It's going to be more, and he spins away and has a first down. Only needed a yard. He gets a couple. And Trey, I believe we're seeing what New Mexico really wants to do today. This is the third drive. They've had to punt the first two. Usually this is the drive of adjustments for both the offense and the defense. They've had a good enough look at their opponent, and you start to see those adjustments sorting out. Right now, New Mexico is lining up, running Dontrell Moore behind that massive offensive line that we've talked about, and they're flat getting after it. Now they bring in their fly set here though, Kelly, with Marcus Smith, D.D. Cox, Chris Brawley. And how about this three receiver formation? You'll see that look. and you'll also see the diamond formation a little later. First down from the 48 yard line and a keeper, but McKinney is shut down. Not fooled was Adam Lancicero, the senior from Orange, California, read it from the outset and he drops him for a loss. You talk about discipline defensively. Lance Cicero has contain on the quarterback. You'll see him at the top. If he's not there, McCamey is a 4-5 guy, Trey. He's down the sidelines for a lot of yardage. Cicero, former walk-on. You can see what he's done recently. They list him at 5-9. If he's 5-9, you're close to 7 <laughs> feet, Trey. Well, he's probably closer to 5-7, but he's second on the team in tackles at that strong safety position. Plays the nickel as well. Second down, 14 yards to go now for the Lobos. And McKamey calls a timeout. So play New clock Mexico, was about out, Trey. They burned a couple now. There we go again. If you do too much at the line of scrimmage, and a lot of their run package is at the line of scrimmage. And they also have a lot of plays where they can go from a run to a pass or from a run to a run, but it's done at the line of scrimmage by the quarterback. Well, we, we've talked about Don Trail Moore, the career rushing leader in the Mountain West Conference, two-time first-team All-Conference, and the last meeting, he couldn't have done much better. Yeah, he, he has a little more power than people really give him credit for, but it's that right there. It's the ability to make the first or second guy miss, and then he has enough speed to really turn a four- or five-yard gain into a gasher that usually takes a 20 or 30 and into the end zone. There's what he's done in terms of school history touchdowns and the 100 yard games had 167 against Washington State had some monster games but for some reason when the Rams line up against the Lobos he takes it to another level well we are talking about a, a junior you know yeah. I mean he played as a true freshman as a sophomore and actually Colorado State oddly enough recruited him here as a defensive back I want to get the name of that recruiter and find out who that was because it would be nice to have the I know Sonny would like to have him on the other side of the field. They'd like him to touch the ball 30 to 40 times and that means throwing him the football. I haven't seen that thus far as we wind down this first quarter should be the final play here. First quarter from Fort Collins. It's a delay handoff and it goes to Cox and Cox takes it up inside the 40 yard line for New Mexico and that will be the final play here in the first quarter. 11-yard pickup, and New Mexico will be facing a second down and three when we come back. One score, it was early. Caleb Haney hooking up with Dustin Osborne on the deep ball. Quarter in the books from Fort Collins. It's Halloween weekend. Look at that guy. Is that, is that your brother? That's not natural. I, I don't think that's natural. The roots, I don't think, are green. <laughs> I think that's dyed, don't you think? Great. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I, I think that kind of looked like our spotter Tom a little bit. I saw some resemblance there. Tom Delnos, he is a former center. So you know those guys. Big play here. Third down. 
three as we start the second quarter. Lobos at the Rams 40 yard line, trying to keep the drive going. Down by a touchdown. McKamey options near side. He loses a football. It's loose inside the 40 yard line. And I think they still have it. The Lobos have it. And it's going to be short of the first down, but a recovery by one of the interior linemen. It's the center, Ryan Cook, speaking of centers. Good decision, good quick decision to get up field on the option, but you have to take the football with you, and it can't fall forward for a first down. So, so this is going to bring up a fourth and short. Fourth down, and looks like about a yard, maybe just short of a yard for New Mexico, and no hesitation, they'll go. They shift three receivers to the top. From the shotgun, McKamey rolling. Pressure, throws, and it's dropped by Moore. He had the first down grab, and he dropped it. This is a guy that has caught 21 balls this season. Well, as Ann Marie said at the top, he's the second leading receiver on this team, and you couldn't see it on this play. Very good execution. You can see 22 at the top sneaking out. They're getting on McCamey. He throws it over the top. You simply have to come down with that and convert for a first down. Boy, that's uncharacteristic. A guy that has been so good. No one near him. But uh, the quarterback was under duress. So they turn it over on downs, and the Rams now have it at their 38-yard line. Time of possession, big time in favor of the Lobos, but nothing to show for it. Yeah, that's exactly right. You can have it all day long, but if you don't get it in the end zone or between the uprights, it makes no difference. Green stays in at that running back spot. Seconds. As they reset the clock here. Here's a look at McKinney, who has to be disgusted. He did a pretty good job delivering the football on the money on that fourth down. The Rams shift two tight ends to the top. Screen pass back to the other side to Anderson. He has a seam down the near sideline. And a first down bumped out of bounds at the New Mexico 42-yard line. David Anderson with that burst. And a big play by the junior. I think we saw a highlight like this at the top. Get your playmaker the football, and this is the way you do it. Look at big Bryzel and Oldenburg, 63 and 71. Again, massive offensive lineman, athletic enough to get out. Look at after the catch. Almost 23% of his total yards come after he has it in his hands. That was a 20-yard pickup, and he did that on the run. First down from the 42-yard line. Haney straight ahead, green, breaks one tackle. Knife's inside the 36, down to the 35-yard line. As they try the inside run game, follow for Shola on the tackle for the Lobos. Well, Trey, that was a different look in the run game. 81, Teresa comes in motion, and he actually runs like a kickout block over the nose. The first man outside of the nose guard, and then Green just gets right in behind him. Sometimes the best way to attack a quick defense is hit him right in the mouth. Green, 5'11", 225, a junior, strong lower body, low center of gravity. The nice carry there, and he's going to get another crack at it. This time, shut down at the line of scrimmage. Bazinet, the strong safety on the tackle. Dontrell Moore on the sidelines, and he'll have to bounce back from, uh, he just doesn't make many bad plays. You're right, and he's the type of individual with the character to bounce back. That's not really not going to affect him. But remember, his huge numbers the last two years they only won one of the games, and the game last year they had to win on a last-second field goal, so he needs some help. It's not just him. The Rams, meanwhile, doing a great job with Haney at quarterback. Long's defensive troops will try to step up here, but Colorado State first wants to call a timeout to talk it over. They're facing a third and three at the New Mexico 35-yard line. When we come back, Rams in front by seven in Fort Collins. 7-0 Colorado State. Caleb Haney, a touchdown pass in the first quarter. That's been the only scoring. And faithful enjoying what they're seeing thus far, despite uh, the uh, green hairdo. It's not a look I would go with, Kelly. Three. I missed that memo where green is in where your hair color is concerned. Third and three. You can see what the Rams have done thus far. Just their third, third down try of this game. Haney rolling play action has plenty of time throws and it's almost picked off and that was good coverage on the corner that time 
David Anderson, the intended receiver. Fulbright and Payne are two of the best at that position. Very well executed except for the lateness of the throw. This ball needs to be out of there already. You can see Payne has the opportunity to come underneath Anderson at the end of that play. It needed to be thrown about a second before that. Great instincts and awareness. 15 pass breakups leads the nation as they bring in Babcock now, the senior. This will be a fake and it's a punt. Babcock set up in field goal formation and doubling as their punter punts it, but it finds the end zone, and the Lobos will start from the 20-yard line. Snapped it directly to Babcock, and he delivers a 35-yard punt. I really don't mind the call. I just think the execution was poorly. Trey, why not try kicking this out of bounds? Why kick it straight down the middle of the field where it has an end over end roll? The chances of it stopping are very minimal. Kick that thing to the corner. Whatever happened to punters kicking the ball to the so-called coffin corner? They're big on hang time now and letting your coverage team get down. That's been kind of the trend lately in college football. Well, there was zero hang time on that end over end kick, and it just simply was outraced the coverage. So Sonny Lubick hoping that his defense can keep the Lobos backed up. Looking to even the Rams record this year at four and four, but more importantly, move to three and one in conference play with dates at Utah, home a game against UNLV and at Air Force still on the schedule. This is important, an important drive for Colorado State's defense. They really didn't stop New Mexico that last series. New Mexico stopped themselves with that fourth down drop by Don Tra Trail Moore. You have to be able to make some adjustments right here defensively. They go with a power set now. Landrick Brody in at the fullback spot in front of Dontrell Moore. Let's see if they're committed to running the ball here. They go play action. McCamey throws to the fullback Brody. He's got it, and he has a first down down the far sideline and out of bounds at the 33-yard line. Just his third catch of the year. Let's take a look now at the ESPN USA Today Top 25. What a game in that Bedlam series, Bedlam. huh? Yeah, I bet that was Bedlam. Unbelievable victory for the Sooners there. It's been a tough year for Illinois. And Florida and Georgia, that is quite a rivalry between those two. Not to mention lame duck uh, head coach Zook finishing out the year there. Yeah, a lot going on down there in Gator country. First down after the Brody catch at the 31 yard line. McCamey puts it in the air. Catch made, big gain, seven yards. As they continue to go to the airwaves, Martin Romero, the senior from Fort Collins, a local kid with the grab there. Now this is really off the running game. Colorado State is putting eight, sometimes nine men in the box. So you have to do stuff like this. You don't have to do it very long. You just have to do it enough to loosen that Colorado State defense up just a little bit. Here's a look at the senior from Fort Collins, Colorado. He split to the near side of the screen this time. Second and three from the 39-yard line. Long count from McKamey. Getting into the right play at the line of scrimmage again. Here's Moore. First down. Moves it up to the 44-yard line. Big surge by that big offensive line. He had the first down even before uh, he had any contact up near the 44. Simon on the tackle. And the people at home will probably notice that McCamey does a lot, spends a lot of time at the line of scrimmage, and that's because they have 10 running plays that they decide based on the look that he gets at the line of scrimmage. Marcus Smith is split to the near side as a lone receiver. Flag is thrown as they blow this play dead. And Smith may have been the guilty party with some motion on this near side. Prior to the snap, false start. Offense number four. Five-yard penalty, still first down. Yep, we saw that from Anthony Carter on the New Mexico offense. Well, they're the ones that, you know, they're the, I think, the seventh most penalized team in the conference. Yeah. There's only one team, and I, right off the top of my head, I can't remember who that is, but there's only one team that's penalized more than New Mexico, and we're seeing it right here, and it's really made a difference. It's not just the amount of penalties, it's where they come, and they put them in second and third and long a couple times already today. Now they're facing a first down and 15, backed up to their 39-yard line. Early second quarter, Colorado State and New Mexico, 52nd meeting between these two. 
They've done some great battles, including last year, won by the Lobos by a field goal. Pitch outside to Moore, and he's pummeled in the backfield. Jamal Hall, the strong side linebacker, got him, but there's also a flag in the backfield. And it's going against New Mexico. Actually, pointed to Colorado State. Let's take a look. number 99 hands to the face 15 yard penalty enforced from the previous spot by rule automatic first down yeah that is big patrick good pastor and that drives sonny a little bit crazy it was against the rams on the left end well maybe we'll get another look at it but it might have been hands to the face of the quarterback running the option patrick good pastor was the defensive end to that side and he may have very well laid one to the face of quarterback cole mccamey the pastor, honorable mention, all Mountain West Conference, four-year starter. You don't expect that from your seniors. You know, and so many times in the heat of battle, you inadvertently get your hands up just a little higher than you should. It's a good point, but it was a costly penalty. First down at the 46-yard line for New Mexico. Trailing by a touchdown, looking for points. They spread it with Moore to the left side, and he bangs out a big one inside the 35 to the 33. And they did a great job of creating a scene there. Miles Koshivar on the tackle. Beautiful football Saturday in Fort Collins, Colorado. New Mexico and Colorado State in a key Mountain West Conference battle. Alongside Kelly Stoffer on the field, Anne Marie Anderson. We've got a battle that uh, really shapes up with defense being the focal point. The rushing attacks of the two teams. Also very important, but New Mexico surprising some people with a lot of different formations and throwing the football. Balanced ace formation, double tight ends. This is usually a running formation. Moore seven yards behind the quarterback and a blown play there. McKinney's going to keep it, and he's dropped for a loss. They uh, were not on the same page. Jamal Hall on the tackle. Running back went one way and quarterback went the other. Yeah, this was a running play, but the wrong man ended up carrying it. Yeah, they just miscommunicated. It looked like Dontrell Moore actually went the wrong way. You're always uh, going to side with the quarterbacks, though. Yeah, I when understand. in doubt, you have to blame somebody else. Rocky Long, who was the 2002 Mountain West Conference Coach of the Year, been to the Las Vegas Bowl the last two seasons, lost to Oregon State last year. His 82nd game at his alma mater. That ties the school record. The numbers of games coached at the school. There's more, and he takes it for short yardage down to the 29-yard line. Let's take a look at that previous play. So you can tell by the way that was blocked, that was supposed to go the other direction. Dontrell just turned the wrong way, or actually opened up and went the wrong way. Third down, six. And this is where the Rams want the Lobos. Passing situation. Moore will stay in the game. This time, though, they're going to split him out as a wide receiver. They usually motion him back into the backfield from there. They're one of five on third downs thus far today. Cox is the lone running back. McKamey, near side incomplete. He wanted Chris Brawley, the junior. That was well behind him. It's fourth down. Let's see if they bring the kicking team out there. And this is what New Mexico suffers from. They really have no second option in the passing game. I mean, this is just a quick hitch, step and throw the football. He was open, very tight coverage on Brawley, but they don't have a second option. And Basquette has a bone bruise on his heel, and he's not feeling very good. He got that a week ago against San Diego State, and he hasn't played a whole lot yet today. Wes Zunker, 46-yard kick. This would be his season long from the left hash. Plenty of leg, and the kick is good. So the Lobos are on the scoreboard. A time-consuming drive, but they do get points this time. 8.37 to go, first half. A West Zunker field goal puts New Mexico on the board with the homestanding Rams in front, 7-3. Great crowd here at Sunny Lubick Field. Midway through the second quarter, Zunker has it teed up. A lot of wind earlier as you look at the scoring drive. 52 yards. 
and they get points this time, and that's got to give them a little bit of confidence. They've been moving the football throughout the first half. Yeah, time of possession is heavily in their favor, but you have to be able to finish drives to get points on the board. Damon Morton and Oldis Janerice are back deep to receive the kick. It will be Morton off the foot of Zucker. He's got it to the 16 and out to the 17-yard line. Let's check in with Ann Murray. Her thoughts on what's going on in the field right now. Well, you may remember last week before the border war against Wyoming, some vandals snuck onto the field and put a big UW on the field using weed killer. Of course, what they weren't thinking of was that it would take a little time for the damage to really make a big impact. So last week, you didn't see it that much. This week, you can see it. And despite that effort to disrupt their focus, CSU won that game. The field was reseeded Monday, but CSU only has one more home game this season, and they're supposed to get a new surface next year anyway. It's too bad. I know it's a great rivalry between those two schools. Here's a handoff straight ahead to Green, and he takes it up close to the 20-yard line. Yeah, I, I really think no harm, no foul, that type of thing, Trey. But the bottom line is Colorado State put the wood to him, 30-7. to seven. Yep. If you're going to vandalize someone's field, you better back it up on the field that night. It was a great performance after the opening drive by Wyoming. And the touchdown, that was it. They ripped off 30 straight points in that 30-7 to seven victory. Caleb Haney has the touchdown pass in the first quarter. Has been moving the team, though. Green again as his running back, and he'll get the carry for the second straight time. Tripped up, still keeps his feet churning, though, and moves it up close to the 25-yard line. Still a couple yards shy of the first down. Follow Fashola on the tackle. There's a look at what he's done thus far. And one rushing yard, 90 passing, but that big touchdown pass. He threw a beautiful post pattern for a touchdown to Osborne, and, and he's doing a very good job at the line of scrimmage of managing the football team, getting them most of the time into the right running play, and he has them now again in a third and three situation, which is a very manageable down a distance for them. They've yet to convert, though, on third down. 0 for 3 in that category. Double tight end alignment. Play action. Haney in trouble. Rolling. He's going to take off with the football. Has some room in a block. Haney hit hard and dropped down at the 35-yard line, but he picks up 10 yards and a first down. Michael Tui on the tackle. There's his ability. He's not the fastest guy in the country, but not bad running the football. No, oh, he's 6'2", 230, and the most important thing about this, it's a great decision. Make a guy miss, Marcus Parker, number 90 right there, and then it's just spontaneity. And then in the end, he's 230. He delivers a blow. He takes a pop right here at the end. Watch this. Boom. But watch him pop right back up at 6'2", 230. He's been there before. That was Mike Mahorek that put the lick on him, but a first down at the 36 for the Rams now. Green gets the handoff. Straight ahead between the tackles and a couple yards. Is that it? That's it there as the linebackers filled the hole. And no gain there. And there's Nick Spiegel, the 250-pound senior in the middle of it. Yeah, what a player he is. And he's, he's really their playmaker on the defensive side of the ball. But what New Mexico does, Trey, up front, they do a lot of line stunting. It's not where they line up to begin with. It's where they go at the snap. And generally, they're trying to funnel from the defensive line, funnel the ball carrier to those linebackers like Nick Spiegel on that play. Look at the rushing yardage thus far, but the big pass play has been the story for Colorado State, and Haney's going to put it in the air again. Rolling to the near side, throws on the run, and the catch is made close to a first down by Dreesen. Slid down to get it in front of Mike Mohorek, the middle linebacker, and that's why Dreesen may be the best tight end in the West. He is sensational at 6'4", 260. Join the Pac-10 in the Mountain West at this year's Pioneer Pure Vision Las Vegas Bowl this December 23rd. Come to Las Vegas for the ultimate in football and entertainment. For tickets, log on to lvbowl.com. And Trey, I don't know that people can uh, listening and watching this can really understand how good that last throw was by Haney. First down after the big catch by Dreesen at the 48. Haney looking to the air again over the middle and it's dropped and it looked like Osborne reacted a little bit late. The ball was right on the money. I don't know if he was ready for it. Payne was on the coverage. 
Was this a timing pattern? What yeah, was it, it? it's called a skinny post. Instead of going out, you just jab, step out, and come inside. He lost his footing a little bit, and therefore he had to take his eyes off the ball. But Dan Hammersmith said they want to do this. Instead of going outside deep, they want to go inside deep. We already saw him hit the home run one time to Osborne, and that time, if he doesn't stumble right there, he has a better chance to catch yeah, that. Yeah, that cost him. He had a tough time keeping his feet. Second and 10. Anderson in the slot to the top of the screen as Dreesen goes in motion. Haney, pressure from the backside, sets up the screen, caught by Green, midfield, 45, Spiegel hammers him, and he's not down at the 43. He'll still be about a yard shy of the first down. You know, this guy is that Lambert Butkus type guy, old school, and he delivers quite a punch. Colorado State's not a big screen team, but when you have a freshman quarterback, you learn how to run some screens real fast because it's the easiest thing for him to do. Very well executed. It's a matter of timing, getting behind the big offensive line, but you better buckle your chin strap when Spiegel comes in because he is going to make you pay for it. A sure tackler, and uh, that's about as sure a tackle as you can make. Third down and two at the 43 of the Lobos. Haney straight ahead, Green surging forward, and a good line surge got him the first down as he inches it up to the 41-yard line. So the Rams are going to keep the football here as we near the four-minute mark. And Hammerschmidt in that offense, very good job of mixing things up on this drive. And I think that's the good word right there is the mix. Do the things that Caleb Haney can do as a true freshman in the passing game and then just pull off and punch people right between the eyes in the running game. And they're being very physical right now with the double tight and three tight end sets for Colorado State. Second in the Mountain West in pass offense, fourth in the Mountain West in total offense. Looking sharp here as they're driving on the Lobos. And Haney fumbles the football. He loses a handle and it's back inside the 45. And I think the Rams got it back. That was Eric Pears, the right tackle that saved the day because Josh Bazinet, the strong safety, was after the football. And it's interesting with young quarterbacks, it's the ball handling sometimes that can come back to haunt you. And that time, the back green that was clearing him on the play fake actually tipped that ball out of his hands. But that's your job as a quarterback to secure the football. You understand that that back is going to be flying by you. You have to keep that pitted in your gut and not let an elbow or something knock that out of your hands. Pairs number 74 there is a first team All Mountain West guy, Outland Trophy candidate, and made one of the bigger plays he's made this season. They lose 18 on the play, now facing a second at 27. But Sonny Lubick's team has the football and the lead. Fort Collins, Colorado is the site. Colorado State and New Mexico, Mountain West Conference football. The Rams have a 7-3 lead. First quarter touchdown pass from Caleb Haney to Osborne, the sophomore. And a field goal by the Lobos in the second quarter. That's been the scoring. We knew there was going to be good defensive play in this game. Yeah, this actually is very much what we would have expected coming into this game. Low scoring. You know, both of these defenses, especially New Mexico's, makes an offense look very ugly at times. That's why you have to hit the big play when you have a chance. Tough situation here for Haney. Second and 27. Green and Dreesen are in the backfield. Delay, handoff. Green spins across the 45-yard line for three yards, and that's it. Still a third and a bunch for the Rams, and this is just where the Lobos want them defensively. Yeah, that botched ball handling by Haney. You went from your plus 40 to all of a sudden being second and 27, and now you're third and 24. You know, that, that might come back to haunt them. They were driving very nicely, and they were probably going to finish out the half with at least a field goal attempt and run all the time off the clock. Okay, let's watch this now on third and 24, see what uh, they bring on the blitz here. They start inching up the linebackers on the line of scrimmage. Back off a little bit now. Haney has plenty of time, sets up, and it's incomplete. He tried to find John Walker on the far sideline. Still would have been short of the first down. Nice play by Jarrell Malone, the junior corner. So the errant snap, the fumble really hurt him. And this too is just a little bit late. Dan Hammerschmidt said, what you're gonna get out of a young quarterback, and trust me, I know this very well, is generally you don't throw the ball until the guy's open, but you have to anticipate. Babcock's punt goes over the head of Ramirez, takes a nice bounce for the Rams inside the five, 
and they down it at the two-yard line. It took a sideways hop, and it couldn't have been better for the special teams unit. Lobos in the shadow of their goal line. They have the football. Country, and we... 7-3, big special teams play by the Rams. Jeff Babcock pinning the Lobos inside the five-yard line. And he, of course, has the 89-yarder earlier in this game, a Colorado State record. The previous was 88 yards by Andy Tejada against Air Force. And Kelly, that was your error. I'm sure I appreciated that then. I don't remember it now. Here's Dontrell Moore breaking a tackle at the goal line, and he pushes it up close to a first down. There's what he's so good at, cut back and also breaking tackles. And getting back to Babcock, right now he's really the player of this game. I mean, he has, you talk about field position, when you're talking about very good defenses, the offenses have to do two things. One is hit big plays when you have them. Haney's done that one time. And the other thing is, is you have to just be patient and play for field position. And Colorado State's doing a great job behind Babcock. Two punts over 50 yards. First time he's done that in his career. He only has two touchbacks the entire season. That's also very impressive. And there's a play that shut down at the line of scrimmage. They did not follow the fake of the quarterback. Instead, stayed right on Moore. And he's dropped for a loss. And now a Ram is shaken up. Chris Kiffin. Yeah, I think it was Chris Kiffin. And this could actually have been called a trip. You're not allowed to trip a guy to tackle him. And I believe that was a trip. But the unfortunate thing is Mr. Kiffin got hurt in the process. Senior from Tampa, Florida, who his dad, Monty, the defensive coordinator of the Tampa Bay Bucks. They're attending to him. There's a great relationship between this Colorado State staff and Monty Kiffin down at Tampa Bay. And Colorado State runs a mirror image of what Tampa does down there. The Tampa 2 is where it got its name. 4-3 defense, double coverage in the behind them, roll your corners most of the time. And what this defense is designed to do is force offenses to drive the football to get points. Kiffin is a defensive tackle. Today's on the Mountain field. West game is brought to you by Allstate, a proud sponsor of the Bowl Championship Series. Baskin Robbins Ice Cream, who wants some ice cream? Arctic Cat Snowmobile, share our passion. And by Quest, the spirit of service. On the front range in Colorado, Fort Collins, Colorado to be exact. Uh, Is that one of New Mexico's <laughs> offensive linemen we just saw there? Maybe a little bit bigger than 330 pounds. The good news is Chris Kiffin is okay. The senior walking off on his own power. Third down, three. Lobos at their own nine yard line. Big play for the Rams defense. And they're just one for six today. McCamey, the pump fake, near side. And it's incomplete. Intended for Martin Romero, the senior. Brandon Cathy on the coverage. Very good coverage by Brandon Cathy. Forced the receiver to the sideline, get in his hip pocket, and when you see him reach for the football, make contact and break it up. Just exactly the way you're supposed to do. The only thing he could have done just a little bit better is try to look back and find the football in the air and make a play on it. So they have him backed up as Goss will punt it away. Anderson and Morton, the two deep men for Colorado State. Standing five yards deep in his end zone. No wind, a high spiraling kick. Morton will take it on his 35-yard line. Trying to get to the far side. Cuts it back and pretty good return out to the 46. And that's where Colorado State will have the football, the short field. Join us next Saturday, November 6th at 1 p.m. Mountain, noon Pacific, as San Diego State travels to BYU. Or the Colorado State Rams take on the Utah Utes, the Mountain West Conference Game of the Week, right here on ESPN+. Plus. What a conference race it has been. Utah, the great season, and these teams, Colorado State, one of them, right in the hunt. They have just one conference loss as 
Heaney has him first down at the 46-yard line in a three-receiver set this time. Swings it out of the backfield, and it's knocked down. He wanted Yonah Rice, and a flag is now thrown. That's going to be a late hit on the quarterback. Yeah, Evroy Thompson is going to get called for getting a little frustrated. New Mexico hasn't been able to really get pressure on this young quarterback, and that's how you take it out on him. This is a pre-designed throw to Yana Rice right here, sneaking out of the backfield. Dropping the passer. Defense, number 92, 15-yard penalty. Forced from the previous spot, automatic first down. Sometimes those defensive linemen get frustrated because they don't get close enough. You see Yana Rice just bubbling off the, out of the backfield. You see right there, and is actually behind him, which was even worse. Tui got his hand on the football, but to no avail. The personal foul, 15-yard penalty, first down inside the 40. And it's a quarterback draw, keeping it all the way, and he gets a yard, and that's about it. Great pursuit from New Mexico. Marcus Parker, the nose tackle, was ready for him. And Colorado State has two timeouts left. It's probably not wise to use one here. You'll probably use it after this next play if you don't pick up a first down. Quick to the line of scrimmage now. And a flag is thrown. And they're going to back up the Rams. Prior to snap, illegal snap. Offensive center number 77. Five yard penalty, still second down. It's Albert Bimper, the junior from Arlington, Texas. But I about guarantee you that it was the fault of a freshman quarterback in a situation that he's really not used to. The hurry up offense, he doesn't have a lot of time with. It's the starter, which was Justin Holland up until a couple of weeks ago. They got all of that work through the spring and through the fall. Haney doesn't make many mistakes, but uh, it's going to happen. You mentioned it. You nailed it right on the head for any freshman. Second down now, 14. Haney's going to let one go deep downfield, and it's caught, but it's out of bounds. Great effort by Dustin Osborne, who hauled it in but could not get a foot in there. And it'll be third and long. And Trey, this is really the third time today that Haney's just a little bit late. Not his fault that time because he was having to dodge some guys in the backfield. But if that ball's thrown just a little bit earlier, that's a huge play for Colorado State. Fulbright was on the coverage. Third and 14. Uh, what do you think? Do they go underneath here? Maybe at least get him into field goal range for Babcock? Yeah, I think something's safe. Maybe a screen, maybe a draw. But you're right. They don't want to make a mistake right here. Yana Rice is the running back with just 16 seconds to go first half. Haney setting up the screen, and it wasn't a play that fooled Nick Spiegel, who blew up that play for a loss. And that will be the final play possibly here of the first half. If you're going to run a screen, be. you better account for number 89 or he's going to blow it up. Sonny Lubick's team in front at the break, 7-3. to three. Big hit by Spiegel ending the half, but a Caleb Haney touchdown pass to Dustin Osborne has been enough for this Rams team. The Lobos getting a field goal from Wes Zunker for their only points after a long drive. Lobos owning time of possession, but Three points, and that's it. So Sonny Lubick has to be impressed with his defense. And uh, right now, hoping that uh, that can hold up and he can get a little bit more from his offense. Haney's looked pretty good, though, for a freshman quarterback. He really has. I think they will gladly go in. It's up 7-3. to three. The defense for Colorado State, to me, is the story. Let's check in with Amory Anderson with Sonny Lubick. Coach, defensively, it's been a strong game for both teams. What has been your success in stopping Don Trellmore? Well, I think we got a nice uh, defensive package there. We're not doing anything that we haven't done in the past. We're tackling fairly well, but he's, he's still broken some tackles on us and got some no-gain plays in the seven or eight-yard gains. But uh, we, we've been playing a pretty steady eight-man front against him most of the time. Thank you, Coach. Guys, back to you. Thank you, Anne-Marie. Colorado State trying to avenge a 37-34 loss last year in Albuquerque. The green and gold of Colorado State has a four-point lead at the break. Colorado, the Rams in front of the Lobos, 7-3 at the break. 
One big play, special teams, defense. That's been the story for Colorado State. Yeah, it really has. The defense is controlling the tempo. The offense is just trying to hit big plays and not screw it up, to be quite honest with you. There was a lot of highlights defensively. Time now for the Sonic Flashback brought to you by... America's drive-in. This is the one big play offensively. Caleb Haney made a great throw to Dustin Osborne, took advantage of new wrinkle off their bootleg. But really, the big plays have come in the kicking game. Babcock, this is a rocket of 89 yards when New Mexico was believing they were going to inherit great field position, and then he pinned them inside the two-yard line after that. Time now for the first half stats, brought to you by Quest. Nothing that jumps out. Colorado State cannot run the football against this team, so you better be able to get something out of the passing game, and they are 107 yards there, and that's really the difference with the big play to Osborne being the difference on the scoreboard. A first quarter touchdown pass for the home team, a second quarter field goal for the visitors from Albuquerque. That's it. It's an interesting second half coming up. In a rhythm, why is that? Well, we're making some mistakes. Uh, we're not executing very well or consistently. We're making some good plays. We're just not making them play after play after play. Now you got to give their defense a little credit for that, too. You know, they have to make some plays to keep us from getting in the end zone, but hopefully we'll be more consistent this half. Thank you, Coach. Guys, back to you. And Marie, well, defense, I, I think both coaches have to be proud of what they've seen on that side of the football. I think particularly for Colorado State. New Mexico, we expect that. Colorado State, especially the last two weeks of this season, have been playing at a very high level. Here's a look at Wes Zunker, who provided the only scoring for the Lobos with a 46-yard field goal. He has it teed up, and we're ready to go. Second half from Sunny Lubbock Field in Fort Collins. Deep men for Colorado State, Morton and Yana Rice. Morton will receive the football, and it'll be a touchback. They'll start first down from the 20-yard line. We talked about these quarterbacks, young but very good and getting better. Here's a look at the comparison thus far. You know, the big difference is the passing yards. Haney has made a play in the passing game. McCamey has missed a couple of open receivers that would have resulted in third down conversions, and they're basically doing an efficient job, but McCamey has to be more efficient in this half. Now, we knew Haney would be facing a, a faster pace against the Lobos with the blitz schemes. Uh, McKamey uh, has some people around him that can make plays. It'll be interesting to see how this plays out. Haney's going to put it up in the air, tries to, but fumbles the football, and then he's hammered, escapes that pressure, and then he loses it. It's loose at the 10-yard line. New Mexico says they have it, and they do. The Lobos get the recovery from Fala Fashola, and that was a case, Kelly, where he should have just eaten the football. He tried to do too much with it, maybe. Sometimes the best play is throw the ball away and make no play at all. Right here, the play's dead. You have to do something else with it, and especially right here. He was going to throw that ball away, and Dan Hammersmith made that point. Sometimes for a young quarterback, the last thing they learned is when you give up. To learn is when you give up on a play, that time he needed to give up on that play way early. Marcus Parker, the nose tackle, hit him initially, and then Fashola was there for the recovery, and New Mexico a golden opportunity. First and 10 at the Rams' 11-yard line as we open up this third quarter. They'll go with Moore, the single running back. He'll get the handoff, trying to bend it to the outside. Off left tackle and three yards maybe, and that's it. Shut down there. The ball now comes free, and the Rams saying they have it, but they're going to whistle this play dead at the eight-yard line. New Mexico comes right out with three tight ends in the football game, and that's an indication of what they want to do. I think they, they certainly want to do this in the red zone, but I think we'll see more of this power type of running game out in the field as well. He moves the football to the six-yard line. Second down and five. As you can see what they have done in the red zone. Very impressive and trying to cash in here. Trips that formation stack to the top of the screen. Man in motion is Moore who gets the handoff and he takes it down to the four-yard line for a couple. Luke Atkins on the tackle from his weak side linebacker spot. And Colorado State needs to tackle well. They were doing it early in the game on that first play that Moore ran um, in the red zone the play before. They had two missed tackles before they finally got him on the ground. 
So third and three, you have to, if you're Colorado State, still be worried about the run here with Moore, then they're going to load it up, that power backfield. And they can still get a first down inside the one. Brody and Moore in the eye set. Smith is the lone receiver to the near side. Play action. McKinney pressure, throws off his back foot, and incomplete. He wanted Logan Hall the tight end in the back of the end zone. Okay, Trey, what do you do right here? I think you take the points. Take the points on the board. And I see the, uh, let's see, do, do you see the kicker? No, I see the power running game being put on the field is what I see. Well, this is a bit of a gamble here at fourth and three. Bird is in there, as you see. Bird and is Zucker, in there. They're Zucker. There they are going okay. to bring the kicking team out. And this is the right decision here early in the third quarter, trailing 7-3. Zucker. 8 of 11, he nailed a 46-yarder in the second quarter. Snap good, and the kick is good. So New Mexico gets it inside the 10. They fail to get a touchdown. They do get a 21-yard field goal off the foot of Wes Zucker. Gets a little bit tighter here in Fort Collins. It's 7 to 6. Closer, 7 to 6 as we start this third quarter. 21-yard field goal by first-team All-Mountain West kicker, Wes Zucker, after a turnover. Colorado State may have dodged a bullet as they hold New Mexico to just three points. Yeah, a tremendous job by Colorado State's defense. Dodge a bullet is exactly right, and I think New Mexico has to be disappointed. You get the ball in a turnover at the plus 11, and you only get three points. Zunker puts his foot into the pigskin. It'll be Morton at his goal line. Trying to get to the far side. Great coverage by the Lobos. Closing that one down as he's knocked down at the 10-yard line. Quincy Black on the tackle. It's a very interesting position for a young quarterback to come back onto the field after a play like this. You turn the ball over. Your defense did you a great favor by holding him out of the end zone. But now we'll see what kind of poise this young man has, but come back and see what he does on this series. Prior to this game, he was picked off a couple times, but had been making great decisions for a freshman. He gets the football. We'll start from the 10-yard line here with the I formation behind him. Green is the running back. He'll get the handoff, trying to bend it to the outside for a couple as they string it out well for a short game. Good pursuit that time by Fala Fashola, the outside linebacker. Look at the first drive, Kelly, and then since then, and that's similar to what Wyoming did against Colorado State last week. You're right, and the difference is Colorado State's defense is responding to the challenge. When your offense isn't getting it done, you just have to buckle it a little bit tighter and go out and keep the opposition out of the end zone. Single running back this time, Green. Osborne is in motion as he bunches up near the line of scrimmage. Green gets a handoff across the 15, out to the 17, still moving the pile forward. Great surge there, but he'll still be a couple yards shy of the first down in the vicinity of the 19-yard line. And the key in what you just said, Trey, is a couple yards short of the fir first down. It's not five or more yards or six or more yards when all heck breaks loose as far as New Mexico's defense is concerned. This is the down and distance that this offense has to be in and that Dan Hammerschmidt right there really wants this offense to consistently be in. Get Haney out on the wing here. He's good on the rollout. They have a double tight end. There's Dreesen, the motion man. Haney's going to put the ball in the air. He gets pressure. He's tripped, keeps his balance, and then just throws it away. There is a flag as well in the defensive backfield as Haney goes down hard. That was thrown in the vicinity of Sperry, number 80, the tight end for Colorado State. Now they're going to tend to Haney here. He had a couple guys after him, was tripped up. Let's take a look. Holding. Defense number 89. The foul was against an eligible receiver. 10-yard penalty. My rule automatic first down. Thompson and Tui were there first, Kelly, and then it, it looked like... Uh, it's the drive into the ground at the end that usually results in the injury. It's yeah. not it's not what happens before you go to the ground. It's getting driven into the ground that really 
sometimes is what hurts. Yeah, Tua is the guy that delivered the blow, and there's a look at Joey Carney, the backup. Just a sophomore, has rushed the ball just once this year, is a holder for the second straight season, but had just two pass attempts last year as a freshman. So talk about a tough situation for this guy replacing Heaney. First down from the 29-yard line from Highlands Ranch, Colorado. Flag is thrown as he hands off to Green, who's dropped for a loss of a couple in the backfield. I think the difference with Joey Carney being in the game is he's been in the program a while, and that will make a difference. He will be efficient in the little things, ball handling and that type of thing. And this is going to back up the Rams here. The loss of a couple. They're going to decline this, I think. Illegal formation offense. Number four was not on the line of scrimmage. Only six men on the line of scrimmage. Penalty's decline was on the play, second down. And there's a good sign. Heaney is back in after the quick breather. He's back in, but he inherits a second and long once again in this offense. And this is the down and distance that you can get quickly into trouble against this Lobo defense. Green and Dreesen in the backfield, second and 11, and now the officials will blow this play dead before it gets started. Colorado State. Rams will talk charge it team timeout this half, number one. Maybe not a bad decision. Lubick and Haney will try to get on the same page here, facing a second and 11 from their own 28-yard line. Rams by a point. Welcome back to the Mountain West Conference Game of the Week. Fort Collins, Colorado, the site. Rams and Lobos and a battle. Defensive struggle. Colorado State in front, 7-6. Big first quarter touchdown pass from Caleb Haney, who is back in at the quarterback position. With Sonny Lubick Field, New Mexico and Colorado State meeting for the 52nd time in a key Mountain West game. Rams trying to hang on to second place in the conference. On play action, Haney stumbles and falls back at the 17-yard line. Tough break, but he did have some pressure from Mike Mohorek, the middle linebacker. Now, this series has really been a disaster for this young man. This is the same play that he hit his touchdown pass, 37 yards to Dustin Osborne earlier, and he just gets on his edge, like out skating on the pond. You get on your edge, you go down just like that. 12-yard loss, and Sonny Lubick's team now facing a third and 21 at their 18. This is th this makes a coach very old very quickly. Is a young quarterback in this type of down and distance consistently? They've struggled on third down, and this would be a huge one if they could somehow pick it up. Three receivers motion on the near side. This will be against Colorado State as he airs it out, and that is it picked off. It is out of bounds. Almost picked off on the far side by Gerald Malone, the junior from Rowlett, Texas. But this will. Uh, be declined, I think, and they will punt the football. It's an incomplete pass. Illegal shift. Offense. Two men went in motion. One man set, the other one did not. Penalties declined. Was able to play fourth down. You see Dan Hammerschmidt following the young quarterback down the sideline. That's exactly why Dan Hammerschmidt, the offensive coordinator, is on the sidelines for a disastrous start to a second half just like that. He'll get in the young man's ear, he'll settle him down and say, listen, forget about that. We go out the next time and you do things fundamentally correct. Babcock looking for another boomer as he stands inside his 10 and this one end over end kick returnable Daniel Ramirez at his own 45. Gets a block, near side, Rams 40, 30. Cuts inside the 25 and down to the 23-yard line. Daniel Ramirez got a nice block, but he did a lot of that on his own on the near sideline. He sets up the Lobos in great shape, and they have a chance to take the lead even with a field goal. Special teams play good for the Rams most of the day, not here. Take note of zero hang time. And this is the result. A low line drive punt a lot of times results in a very good return. Questionable at the top there. Could have been a block in the back. You'll see at the end here, Babcock is blocked in the back right there. Neither one of them were called, but you have to go with it. 36-yard punt, big return. Longest punt return against the Rams this year. First down from the 22-yard line. Handoff, Moore, 15. He has a first down, and he drags the tackler, Lance Cicero, inside the 10, and there's a ram down behind the line of scrimmage. And 
and that's Jamal Hall, the linebacker. And an official's timeout here. Dontrell Moore, 86 yards rushing first half. Century mark with insight again. Join the Pac-10 and the Mountain West at this year's Pioneer Pure Vision Las Vegas Bowl. This December 23rd, come to Las Vegas for the ultimate in football and entertainment. For tickets, log on to lvbowl.com. Sonny Lubick saw Haney go down, and now Jamal Hall getting up slowly. And it's not the healthiest linebacking core you've ever seen coming into this game. Courtney Jones was questionable. He's been on the field a great deal. At six feet tall, 180 pounds, Hall has to rely on speed and quickness. And that time, he just got number 59, Robert Turner. Big body on him, and he didn't hold up very well. Lubick's defense has their backs to the wall now. First and goal, New Mexico at the seven-yard line. This, you would think, is where the Lobos would go power game with Dontrell Moore. You would think so. They didn't the last time they were down here in the plus territory. Moore is the lone running back with two receivers. Balance set, double tight. He'll get the handoff straight ahead and easy sailing to the end zone. Touchdown, New Mexico, as Dontrell Moore finds the end zone, his third rushing touchdown this season, and the Lobos are in front. Now the question, up 12-7, do you go for two here? And I think that's what they're going to do. We'll see what the, uh, I think there's an unsportsmanlike at the end of this play. Claude Terrell needs to take his big body back in the huddle and keep his mouth shut. This may hurt his team, and it might not be a question of whether they can go for two or not. 325-pound senior, Terrell, their left tackle. Well, that is... Uh, that's really co real costly. You've got to kick the extra point if you're backed up here, don't you? Oh, absolutely. That was a foolish penalty. It takes them out. It made the decision for the coach. Now they're going to change uh, their look offensively now as more will come out. And it looks like they'll just uh, kick the extra uh, point. Yeah, Zunker's already in there. Point. They're yeah, going to kick the extra point. So really, this is the right decision when you're backed up. You know, there are a couple things on that series that I really didn't like out of New Mexico. Dead ball, personal foul, offense number 76. 15-yard penalty will be enforced on the try. One on time down. It's that, that is one of them that I didn't like. After the play, Claude Terrell causing grief in the end zone, but also 59, Robert Turner stood over Jamal Hall after he hurt him, was counting him out like a boxer. I think that's Bush League. You need to play between the whistles and have a little class about you. Well, it's such an impressive drive from New Mexico uh, as they cash in with the touchdown. And this will be Zunker now, who's 19 of 19 in extra points this season. The kick on the way, and the kick is good. So a six-point lead for the Lobos. 9.48 to go third quarter, and more over the century mark once more. That doesn't surprise you. They're playing Colorado State. He absolutely loves to play against his 4-3 Tampa defense. And this is what New Mexico has to do more of. Just hand the ball off behind an absolutely gigantic offensive line and let Moore figure out where to run the football. He's very good at it. He does a good job of making decisions behind the line of scrimmage. Get the young man the football and let him do something with it. That was a big run for more than one reason. Now 40 touchdowns, all-time Lobo leader, passing Terrence Mathis, who's <laughs> put together some great seasons as a receiver in the NFL. And if you're Colorado State right now, you need something big to happen in your favor. And it can come right here on this kick return. It doesn't matter how it happens, but it better happen quickly. So miscues. First the fumble by Haney, then the punt. It was a returnable punt that set up New Mexico in great shape. And they're in front now, 13 to 7, trying to improve their overall record to 5 and 4. With 9.48 to go third quarter, let's see how the Rams answer. Zunker with a short kick this time. It'll be Damon Morton at his seven-yard line. And he's hammered at the 17, and the ball comes free, and I think the Lobos have it. Unless they rule it dead, the Lobos have the football, and they do at the 17-yard line. 
Morton lost it. Disastrous for Colorado State. And New Mexico is second in the entire country in takeaways, and you've seen it here in the second half of why that is. They're tenacious, they're relentless, they get a lot of hats around the football, they fly around, they love to play a game, and if you're Colorado State, you better find a, a way to change this momentum real quick. You saw number 45, Joe Sealander, he's a guy that jumped on it. Yeah, that ball was, was absolutely out. You have to secure the football against this team. Big special teams play, and uh, there's what New Mexico has done. Second in the nation. They continue to do it week in and week out. Hand off Moore inside the 15, and he rams forward to the 13-yard line for five yards. New Mexico is doing exactly the right thing, Trey. This Co Colorado State defense has been on the field a long time already in the second half. Put those big bodies on them up front and let Don Terrell do just that. I mean, there was nothing at the point of attack. He has good vision, cuts it back, gets the most out of that play. But right now, you have the opportunity just to roll up this Colorado State defense. Second and four at the Rams' 12-yard line. Moore, seven yards deep. They run the option to the near side. The pitch to Moore, and he shut down. He lost a yard back to the 14. Paulie was over there from his linebacker spot, and also Daryl Williams from his corner spot. Here's Anne Marie. Moore is uh, one of the University of New Mexico 2004 Beefmaster Award winners. Every spring, the Lobos have a competition called the Night of Champions, which is a type of strongman competition designed by strength coach Mark Paulson. The contest consists of four lifts, bench, squat, power clean, and incline. Moore is one of those players, they say, who gets stronger as the season goes on, and that may be why the running back's hitting his stride right now. You're right, you might like him to touch the ball 30 to 40 times. He'll be at that number, maybe more. McKinney rolling out, throwing back against the green for more, and incomplete. Good coverage over there as Brandon Cathy, the sophomore from Liberty, Missouri, was right on him. Play action, Pat. Boot pass one way, and they're throwing back to Dontrell Moore. He fakes it to him there, and McKinney has him in mind all along sell it and then look back. Kathy did a good job of being disciplined and staying home and actually had an opportunity to break on that ball and come up with a huge play. Zunker now on the field is connected from 46 and 21 yards. A 31 yard attempt and trying to make this a two score game and the kick is good. Big three points for New Mexico as Zunker splits the uprights, the Lou Groza Award candidate. Sonny Lubick's team with some errors that have been costly here in the third quarter, and New Mexico now has a 16-7 lead. Well, and that's amazing to think about it. The score's only 16-7. The way the second half has looked, you would have thought they were down by three touchdowns. Yeah. But that's the good news. But the bad news is Colorado State hasn't looked anywhere close to being able to do anything to get points on the board in the last couple of quarters. The Rams are looking for a big play. They knew they wouldn't have a lot of long drives against this New Mexico team, but they expected to break some big ones. They've only had that one in the first quarter. The, the nature of this New Mexico defense is to create a lot of minus plays and ugly plays for the opposition. And the thing that you have to do if you're Dan Hammersmith, you stay patient with the running game and you just pick your spots to make big plays in the passing game. Maybe get the ball in the hands of David Anderson. Yeah, they had to rush the ball coming in. They have done that totally ineffectively. So the next step is get something out of the passing game, and number four would be a good choice. You're right. Robert Herbert and Damon Morton back deep for the Rams as Zunker will kick it away. 16-7 New Mexico. They trailed 7-3 at halftime. It'll be Morton at the goal line. Trying to run across the field, and he's knocked down at the seven-yard line. New Mexico got down there so quickly in coverage, he had nowhere to go. Haney good in the first half, not so good second half. Let's take a look. Well, this resembles something like a freshman would do when he's playing. Dribbles the football, not real good ball security, doesn't know when to give up on the play, and then slips and falls down. That happens every day. But what's important right now is what do you do with this drive, Caleb Haney? Three of three on the first drive. The touchdown pass, four of 11 since then, and the costly turnover. This time starting from a seven-yard line. 
Handoff, Jimmy Green trying to get to the outside. He can't get there. And there's the speed on the outside from Nick Spiegel, among others. They run sideline to sideline so well. Well, and Jimmy Green's game is not sideline to sideline. It's between the tackles. Wow, look at that right there. Colorado State, there's 80 on the first drive of the game, and you can see how the tide has turned since then. But what's happening right now, mistakes by Colorado State, and New Mexico is kind of finding their footing a little bit, and they're starting to get physical, and Don Terrell Moore is starting to gash them a little bit. Second and eight, Osborne and Anderson are the receivers here. Let's see if Haney maybe tries to go up top a little bit. He's got a good arm, play action, rolling. Far side, catch made for short yardage by Dreesen out to the 11-yard line. Give him two, maybe three, that's it. It's going to be a third and long. Kevin Walton, the strong safety on the tackle. And a third and long, which really is six or more against this New Mexico defense, is asking for disaster, especially when you're backed up because the defense has a little more freedom. When they have an offense backed up, they will take more chances. And this is a Lobo defense under Rocky Long that takes a lot of chances anyway. Yeah, yeah, and this time Sonny Lubick will come out with three receivers. Walker, Anderson, and Osborne are in there. On third and six, Haney trying to keep the drive going. Fires it for Anderson. He makes a big catch across the 35 and knocked down at the 38-yard line. What a pass over the top by Haney. The pass was good enough in this down and distance backed up. This is a great pass, but watch the body control at the end here. He turned completely around in the air and came down with this football. He will have another look at it right at the end over the wrong shoulder, but a good receiver will adjust and make a young quarterback look awfully good in the end. 28-yard pickup, uh, the best athlete on the field showing why with that grab. First down now from the 40-yard line for the Rams. Looking for a spark here in the third quarter. Haney setting up the screen. It's Anderson. Anderson has room to roam. First down and more into New Mexico territory. And then a flag comes in, a late hit out of bounds. He'll tack on 15 more. Well, what better guy to spark this offense than number four? Well, did we not just talk about that, yep. Trey? You talked about getting their playmaker the football. You're going to add another 15 at the end of this. There's the man right there. He has to touch the ball. After the play ended, dead ball, personal foul. Defense number 89, 15 yards, and forced from the other run, automatic first down. Spiegel. We talked about the way that you need to get this young man, your playmaker, the football. He almost had his knee on the ground right there. Very fortunate they didn't call it. But this is exactly what he can do. Yards after the catch. They're not going to throw the ball downfield. Let's check in with Amory. Well, Kelly, you know last week from the border war that David Anderson didn't catch a pass all game. He didn't seem to be too upset about it. He's beloved by this team for the selfless play. I'll continue in a minute. Jimmy Green for a yard, and that's about it. Yeah, he does so much more, Anne-Marie, than just catch the football. The Rams sports information director also happens to be the team's stat guy. And as Ella said that post game, he felt a little bad about the end of Anderson's streak of catching a pass in 19 consecutive games. He felt bad, that is, until he saw Anderson run and grab the bronze boot that CSU had just won in the border war. Ozella said that when he saw Anderson's elation post game in the locker room last week, he realized it really was true that Anderson didn't care about personal stats, even though he's a semifinals for the Blitnikoff Award, and he's not seen as many passes as he did with Justin Holland. On second and 10 from the 24-yard line, Haney looking for Drees in the H-back, and he dives forward to get some extra yardage inside the 20, setting up a third and about five. You know, and that's very, very good stuff for Man Marie. Sonny Lubick said an amazing thing. Here David Anderson is, one of the top receivers in the entire country, does not catch a pass, but this man right here said it was probably his best game as a wide receiver. That's pretty amazing, but he goes down to block defensive backs and tries to get pancake blocks. He doesn't go down there to shadow box. Here's what he's done today. He had 12 catches against BYU, nine against USC, and he helps them in so many ways. Third and four, key play here from the 18-yard line from the gun. Haney over the middle, catch made near the goal line, touchdown, Walker. 
John Walker, the red shirt freshman, puts the Rams in the end zone. And how about a little poise from a freshman quarterback? Remember the disastrous start. He comes and makes a huge throw on third down, and then he comes down and throws his second touchdown pass of the game to Walker. 24-yard strike, and Haney really showed something. Oh. Bounce it back. He has something that, I mean, that is nothing about coaching. It's a little moxie, a little poise, and just trying to get yourself up off the ground and make a play for your football team. Babcock, important PAT, and the kick is good, and it's now a two-point game. 5.50 to go third quarter. The freshman from Forney, Texas, getting some help from Anderson, and then Walker, his team within two points. Dodge Dakota. The redshirt freshman from Lancaster, California, John Walker, big touchdown grab as Colorado State draws within two points of New Mexico here in Fort Collins, Colorado. Kevin Mark to kick it away. The deep men for the Lobos, Marcus Smith and Kevin Walton. Big drive by Haney and company as they were had their backs to the wall a little bit on their heels, but they showed a lot getting a touchdown there. Big kick through the end zone, and New Mexico will start from the 20-yard line. Time now for the Arctic Cat drive of the game. And Walker's the receiver at the top. It's a dig route, which simply means a deep in route. The defender right there needs to hold that off. He doesn't stand underneath it. Very good catch in traffic and a very good throw by a freshman quarterback. Walker, their third receiver. And how about Haney? You know, we some guys just have it and some don't. A lot of would, a lot of people just put their head in the sand and uh, they'd be done the rest of the game. You can't get a worse start than they had in the second half. And he was right in the middle of the, the eye of the storm, so to speak. But that is the what he showed on that last drive is exactly what Coach Dan Hammerschmidt, the offensive coordinator, and Sonny Lubick talked about. He has poise beyond his years. They're going to re-kick this kickoff. There was an encroachment on Colorado State. So um, instead of the touchback, they'll tee it up again. Haney with two big touchdown drives, and in those drives, the one in the first quarter and then the one we just saw completed to Walker to cap it off, he was 8 for 8, 146 yards. Yeah, they need some more of that from him and a lot less of what he, how he started this yeah. second half, and they need a big play from Babcock right here. Actually, it's going to be Mark that comes in. They need this ball in the end zone, and they need to play field position. This defense now is a question mark for Colorado State. New Mexico offensively was getting in a little rhythm. This defense from Colorado State needs to take them out of it real fast. Mark has 18 touchbacks this season. As he'll kick it away to Marcus Smith and Kevin Walton. You see him there back near the goal line. And talking about that Colorado State defense, New Mexico's last three drives started on the plus 11, the plus 22, and the plus 18. Two out of the three, they only gave them field goals. That yeah. could be huge before this day's done. Well, you're right. They uh, appeared to, to have a chance to put the game away. You get three instead of seven. Big difference there. They have the football now. The right football to kick it off. And Mark will do so after the encroachment. It'll be pushed back to the 30-yard line. Kevin Mark from Coral Springs, Florida. Short of the goal line. It'll be taken by Kevin Walton. And he tries to come to the near side, beats a man to the 35-yard line, and dragged down at the 39. Robert Herbert on the tackle for Colorado State. So New Mexico in front. And let's see how they respond now to that drive. Still have the lead, but this is tight, Kelly. And maybe they go to the bread and butter here, the rushing game. Yeah, I definitely would if I was I was calling the plays. And this Colorado State offense was reeling a little bit. And they come Look at out, this. They come out in a bizarre formation. Two trips, one to the top, one to the bottom of the screen. They swing it out to Dontrell Moore, and he picks up four yards. And it was actually almost like a swinging gate. Some of those offensive linemen were out at wide receiver positions on that last play. Terrell was one of them, the big 325-pounder. Here's a look. Well, rest assured, Terrell's not going to get the football. It's just to spread him out, a little deception, but it only results in four yards. That's a whole lot of window dressing for four yards. I don't think I've ever seen that. Two. Have you ever seen a 350-pound wide receiver? No, are you kidding me? Second down and six. This time, just three receivers out. 
two running backs, handoff, Moore, breaks free up the middle. He's into CSU territory and down to the 37-yard line. And there's his first, land Cicero on the tackle, or it could have gone for a lot more. And this is what Colorado State fears, is just line up, whether it's shotgun or not, power running game, and let Dontrell Moore out in space make people look silly a lot of times. 20-yard pickup there, and he's well over the century mark, and now threatening 200 again. As you look at the rush defense, it's been tough for this Rams team in that category. Three receivers again, and a handoff to Moore again. Up the middle, brings a big one, and he's close to a first down, close to 10 yards there. Hall the tackle as they take it down to the 27. And remember, Trey, early in this game, any success that New Mexico was having was generally outside on the edge. And when you start getting gashed up the middle if you're Colorado State, that's usually not a good sign. And they're hoping for something positive, a turnover, but uh, tough when it's second and one when you have somebody like Moore in the backfield on the New Mexico side. Two receivers to the near side. Moore's going to get it, starting to get the ball quite a bit more, and I think he needed just a yard and appears to have the first down inside the 27-yard line. Well, this is their philosophy, Kelly. They feel that they're going to get stronger in the fourth quarter rushing the football with those big guys leaning on people. Well, not only the big guys, but you have a very fit physical back behind them, and a beef master story that Ann Murray was talking about is exactly right. This guy can carry the load. A feature back that needs to touch the ball 35 to 40 times, you have to be fit to carry the load that much. Howard set this time with Bird in at the fullback spot in front of Moore. First down from the 26. Here's Moore again. Cuts back and is in trouble. And dropped for a loss back at the 33. Jonathan Simon, the nose tackle, was there. The senior, along with Jamal Hall from the linebacker spot, eight-yard loss. In the running game, Dontrell Moore usually makes good decisions. This isn't one of them. He cut back just a little bit too early. You have to force the point of attack to the line of scrimmage, and then the cutback naturally happens. It doesn't if you decide that about four yards deep in the backfield. Now the fullback Bird checks out as they're in a passing situation here, second and 14. Three receivers stacked. D.D. Cox is the lone running back in for Moore. Dontrell Moore is out here wide at the wide receiver position. On the near side, and Cox is going to get the handoff, and he's shut down. Maybe got back to the line of scrimmage, and that was it, and it'll be third and long. Hall was there again. Hall's been all over, and there's Pauly as well, the middle linebacker. A lot of different looks from the Lobos. They continue to shuttle people in and out of there. And sometimes I think they fool themselves, to be quite honest with you. I mean, Moore's the guy that needs to be the workhorse behind, again, this massive offensive line. Sometimes I think you put yourself behind the eight ball, just like right here. This isn't an automatic third down situation for them. Moore's the running back this time. They're one of nine on third downs. Third and 15. McKamey. Play action. Has time in the pocket. Fires. Open his basket, and it's incomplete. He was open. That had a lot of mustard on it through the hands of the junior receiver. And this is where McKamey's game needs to improve. Play action pass. They're not fooling anybody at third and 15. He has a good look. You have to put this on him. Corner route that was just broken off because of the coverage. Basket is open. McKamey has to come up with that throw. Now this would be a season long for Wes Zucker. He has a little bit of a win behind his back and a 48-yarder from the right hash mark. The kick on the way, line drive kick, and it is no good. So Zucker, one of the top kickers in the country, first team all Mountain West, cannot connect there. He nailed 46 and 21-yard kicks earlier. And you have to give a, a boatload of credit to Colorado State's defense. Remember, Trey, this drive started with a good kick return because of a penalty on the first kickoff. New Mexico got started with very good field position, and they got zip out of it. Well, this also sets up the Rams in pretty good field position at their 31-yard line. They shift Dreesen and Martindale to the near side. The tight ends, Haney rolling left, throwing to Dreesen out of the backfield, and he takes it out of bounds after a five-yard pickup to the 37. 
Spiegel on the tackle. This guy is so good, Joel Dreesen. Second career receptions for that guy's not CSU. bad either. Yeah, <laughs> Spiegel and Dreesen, especially when they meet downfield. But Spiegel's the one that is responsible for covering the tight end as he goes out in the flat into that boot. It's very deceptive, but you have to be disciplined, and he did a pretty decent job that time. Six-yard pickup, second and four. Anderson's the motion man for the Rams. Haney hands it off to Green. A yard, maybe two, as he inches up to the 39. Let's take a look at some scores in college football. The ESPN USA Today Top 25. The Sooners hanging on in Stillwater. And we we have extracurricular activity on the field that we're not going to see, but they threw a flag, unsportsmanlike, on somebody. And Georgia looking good against the Gators on home turf. Offsetting personal foul penalties. We just talked about Joel Dreesen. He was right in the middle of that. After the play had ended, dead ball, personal foul, defense number 33. Dead ball, personal foul, offense number 74. Penalties offset, fourth down. Excuse me, fourth down. Now it should, it should be, be third, third down. down. Yeah, it should be third That's and two. That's a mistake. Third and two from the 39. Third down. Thank you, Carl. They've had a lot to sort out here in the last quarter in terms of penalties. And this is a big play. Third and two from their 39 as Anderson checks in from the sideline. Huge play right here. This needs to be a conversion if you're Colorado State fan. Anderson, the lone receiver. Double tight end alignment. Green is the lone running back. Haney hands it off to Green, trying to stretch it over tackle. He's got the first down and more to the 43-yard line. Pick up the four, and they move the chains. Well, Green has been so good the last couple weeks. And this is a good case of Colorado State motioning an extra tight end into the point of attack and running right at the overload from New Mexico. Good job of power football, getting a hat on a hat and getting a running back that can run hard in there and get a first down for you. There are four or five on third down conversions here in the second half. Colorado State after that green carry, first down from the 43-yard line. Haney play action, the little roll, applies him plenty of time, steps up now, now he throws, and Anderson with an effort, did he make the catch? They say no, near side. Haney uh, didn't look like he knew what he wanted to do with it, finally threw the football. And he actually made a very good throw, and a veteran wide receiver in number four, Anderson, working back down the sideline to help his quarterback out. I don't think either official, the one in front of that player behind it, actually saw that very well. New Mexico was willing to call it out of bounds, but I'm not sure if he was in or not. It's a big game in the Mountain West Conference. Let's take a look at this. Let's see if we can see it right here at the end. Oh, man. Wow. Close. It looked like his right foot was in. So it's second and 10 from the 43-yard line. Late third quarter. New Mexico clinging to a two-point lead from the gun. Haney, plenty of time, rolling, looking, running, and he just steps out of bounds. And I, I will say one thing, the Rams offensive line is doing a great job giving Haney time back there. Yeah, that's a great point because most of the times when New Mexico has brought pressure, Colorado State has kept an extra tight end and it's called max protection. That time it wasn't even max protection and they still protected pretty well. Tui, the left end, finally uh, pushed him out of bounds. It's now third and 10 from the 43-yard line. And again, this is a situation the Lobos want to be in with their blitz scheme. Walker split to the top of the screen. Osborne and Anderson to the bottom. Haney takes the snap. Has time. Looks near side over the head of Anderson incomplete. The coverage was there from Brandon Payne, the senior from Dayton, Texas, and they'll have to punt the football. It would have taken a, a perfect throw, but Anderson ran a decent route. Payne had very good coverage. And once again, Colorado State's offensive front blocked that pressure from New Mexico. 
Jeff Babcock, who's had a big day, had a low punt that was returned, but that 89-yarder, longest in school history. There's Daniel Ramirez, who's handled the punt return chores for the Lobos today. Babcock, a chance to pin him deep here. He hangs one high, spiraling kick. Ramirez is going to let it bounce inside the five and into the end zone. So the Lobos will have the football first down from their 20-yard line. Big game in the Mountain West Conference. The Rams trying to stay in second place in conference play and just uh, an important game uh, for Air Force and Wyoming, trying to establish a little confidence. How about the Cowboys? Yeah, no kidding. Air Force is struggling just a little bit, especially on defense, but to shut down the triple option like Wyoming is, they were, the last couple of weeks, Wyoming's running a rush defense was exposed a little bit. And all eyes on the Utes as they try to keep their season perfect in San Diego. Lobos at the 20-yard line, 28 seconds to go here, third quarter. Handoff, Moore, shut down, no game. Atkins was in there, nading also the defensive end. And Pauly has been all over the field. He also was a big part of that. And, they, and New Mexico was in their power formation. Again, double tight, big fullback, big running back, gigantic offensive line. And now we'll probably see like some provocative formation the next play. Three quarters in the books. McKinney has the four fingers up. That means the fourth quarter is here. 16-14, New Mexico in front of Colorado State. Dontrell Moore over 100 yards again for the Lobos. Walker, big touchdown catch, two-point game. Democrat. It's been entertaining thus far, and the fourth quarter is here in Fort Collins, Colorado, New Mexico, leading Colorado State 16-14. Lobos have the football facing a second and 10 from their 20-yard line. Kami, the sophomore from Artesia, New Mexico. The long count at the line of scrimmage. Now he'll run the option to the far side, cuts it up across the 25 to the 26. We haven't seen him run the ball much, Kelly, but he is very quick, outstanding speed on the wing. He's a legitimate 4-5 guy, and you have to account for the quarterback first when you run the option, and then just rally wide to Dontrell Moore on the sideline. The third and four coming up as you look at the numbers, and we thought New Mexico would focus on the run. Colorado State would like more of the rushing game being a factor. Turnovers, of course, the big story here in the second half. Third and short, handoff, more, and he has a first down. He needed the 30, he gets it to the 31. Tackle by Hall, who's been busy at that linebacker spot. New Mexico is really getting lathered up offensively. Those big guys up front are starting to play very physically. And you really, Colorado State needs something big to happen for them. Someone needs to step up, make a big play, get a takeaway, and get off the field. We talked about their size, 325, 328, 316, 339, 329 across the front. Then they have a tied in in Augustiniak that's 255. They have the ability to grind it out. They have a fresh set of downs now from the 31, setting up a screen, and it's incomplete. Basket, the intended receiver. Another high and wide one by McCamey, but Jason Nady, number 59 from his right defensive end position, had a lot to do with that. He kept, he kept his feet and got at the quarterback's feet just as he was wanting to throw that screen. McCamey, 0 for 12, passing the football. 0 for 7 in the second half. He has really struggled in that department. Did not look good on that throw. Second and 10 now. Shotgun formation with split backs next to him. Looking over the middle. Throws. Catch made for a first down. And Basket trying to make something happen. And he does. Near sideline. He has room to roll. 20. 10. He takes it the distance. 
Touchdown, New Mexico. Hank Basket, the junior from Clovis, who's the Mountain West Conference Outdoor High Jump champ, just his second touchdown this season. A huge one as he extends the Lobos lead. The coaching staff talked about Basket being a great athlete trying to become a good receiver, and I think he's getting there. But Anthony Carter, the other wide receiver for New Mexico, 87, had an absolutely tenacious block that sprang him for a decent play to a huge play that resulted in a touchdown. He hadn't been successful in the passing game, but then they get a huge one. The extra point by Zunker is good, and that extends the Lobos' lead to nine points. Hank Basket, big, strong target, and a guy that uh, is a personable guy. They love him, great personality, but he just showed his athletic ability right there. It's not often you see a 6'4", 220 guy just run away from everybody. Five play, 80 yards, but when you get 69 of them in, in one play, it's a dig route, a nice accurate throw, just an in route, put it on his numbers, get your feet on the ground, and then look to do something with it. Watch the block right at the top of the screen, and then it actually knocked two Colorado State defenders into one another, resulting in a huge play at this point in time for New Mexico. Well, they talk about the receivers being great blockers. Carter involved in that. Uh, with the way they run the football, they've got to be good blockers. Oh, and the, the coaching staff from New Mexico actually went out on the field when Basket got in the end zone and picked Anthony Carter up and started congratulating him. It happened in the perfect spot right in front of your coaching staff. So McKamey stepping up with the touchdown pass, and that's the longest play allowed by the Rams this season, 69-yard strike. That's hard to believe because they've allowed some big plays. You talk about playing at Colorado and USC and Minnesota. Yeah. There were some big plays in those games. 23 to 14, we've had big plays here. The Rams, the touchdown pass to Osborne in the first quarter. And New Mexico showing they can do more than just rush the football with a big touchdown pass to put them in front, 23-14. Sunker's kick fielded by Morton at the seven yard line right up the gut and out to the 23. Black on the tackle for the Lobos. Well, they think this kid's getting better and better. Hard to believe he's just a sophomore. We talked a lot about Haney. This guy's got some good years ahead of him. Well, and he actually missed almost two games because of the concussion. The better part of two games and one entire football game, he didn't play at Air Force. And Dan Dodd talked about that, the offensive coordinator, of how valuable that, that game time would be today. And the, the key drive for him was a game-winning drive against Texas Tech. That really helped his confidence. Here's a handoff on first down. And not much for Jimmy Green. He lost yardage as the front was tough that time. Everoy Thompson leading the charge, the junior from Texas. Colorado State that time, Trey, tried to run a counter play where you have to pull linemen, and I think it would be the last running play I would choose against New Mexico's defense because what totally disrupts a counter play is penetration, and New Mexico's all about penetration defensively. Yeah, they're uh, in having the lead as well. Second down and 12. The defense probably licking their chops a little bit here. Haney. He's going to put it in the air, five-step drop, pressured, throws, what a catch made by Walker. Breaks a tackle, and he has a first down out to the 40-yard line. That was a great individual effort. First of all, Haney getting rid of the football under pressure, but then Walker breaking a couple of tackles, 18 yards. Well, from one freshman to another, and Colorado State needs some big plays to happen fairly quickly, and it's not often you can count on your freshmen to be doing it for you. Yeah, Spiegel and Brown were the guys that uh, could not wrap them up, and it's a first down at the 40. Well, that bodes well. We talked about how young this Colorado State team is. Six freshmen used this season. They only have seven seniors on the depth chart. Green in at the running back spot. Haney to the air again. Has some pressure backside. Airs it out deep downfield for Walker. Anderson also there, and it's incomplete. They ran into each other inside the 15-yard line. And I think what happened is actually this throw was a little bit late, and so you have one post, and the in route on the other side turned into a post as well. 
And actually, it looks like somebody just flat ran the wrong route. You don't end up with two posts at the same time. Walker and Anderson both had a shot at it. Anderson will check out now. From the 40-yard line. Haney on second down, a flag is thrown. He'll option near side. Spiegel wraps him up after a short gain out to the 43-yard line. Couple flags. The near and far side of the field. Three fourteen, New Mexico, looking for another win against the Rams. This one is procedure against Colorado yeah, you State. You can find this if you're New Mexico. Illegal formation, offense number eighty-seven. Only six men on line of scrimmage. Penalty decline. Result of the play. Third down. Haney didn't get much on that tray, and so you already have him in the third down and long distance that you want this young quarterback to have to try to do something out of. Yeah, it's still third and seven. So a uh, tough conversion here for Sonny Lubick's team. Third and seven from their 43. And yet again, another huge play that this freshman has to try to come up with. Walker and Anderson to the top. On the near side, it's Dustin Osborne. Haney from the gun, trying to deliver, has time over the middle, catch made by Osborne. He has a first down to the 35 and tripped up at the 32-yard line. Dustin Osborne has been big, the sophomore from La Hunna, Colorado. His big game this year, six catches, 122 against Minnesota, but uh, this may be his biggest game. And again, the in route that obviously Caleb Haney is comfortable throwing. He even had to feel the high shotgun snap, keep, kept his poise, and put it on the money. Good adjustment by Osborne at the end, and then a little yards after the catch on top of it. Watching the 11-minute mark. Lobos by nine points, and now two in the backfield for the Rams as Green will go in motion out of the backfield. Sperry's in the backfield. He's got the ball. He's going to throw it back to Haney incomplete. Corey Sperry, their freshman H-back, lined up as a running back, and he is a former quarterback. He was all Colorado out of Pueblo, Colorado. And this was a, I don't think he intended to drop this, but it was actually a good decision. Mr. Spiegel, number 89, is not fooled by this a lick. He's right there saying, quarterback, why don't you catch that so I can get you right in the ear. Let's check in with Anne Marie. Sperry used to be a quarterback. He also, for a time, was being recruited by the Rams basketball team, too. Sperry, who was a forward, first fell in love with Fort Collins when he attended basketball camp here every year since eighth grade. In his junior year, he went to football camp. They're excited about his future on second and long, airing it out for the end zone as Haney incomplete. He wanted Walker down the far sideline. Pretty good coverage. Josh Bazinet, the strong safety, was with him step for step. And there's Malone also in the vicinity. In a third and ten situation, it's this is going to be a long field goal if they don't pick up anything else. But again, you don't want to make a mistake. You're still down by two scores. You need a field goal somewhere along the line anyway. And so look at what they've done on third down. And that's four out of their last five. They were like two for seven in the first half. Third and ten from the 31. It's a two-score game. That's the other thing to keep in mind here. They're in Babcock's range. Haney rolling right away from pressure. Sets up. Throws. Catch made, and a first down. There's a flag coming in late after the Haney throw. It's going to be roughing Haney again. Green the catch in the first down, and roughing will be tacked on as they roughed up the quarterback. I think that's going to be Kyle Coulter, number 96. Personal foul, roughing the passer, defense, number 96. Just half the team yard pillars. Half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. I mean, it was a great throw. Great catch. They already had the conversion, but you just have to lay off. You're costing your team. The ball's gone. You can take two steps and hit the quarterback. That's too far, especially hitting him from the blind side. That sets up Colorado State first and goal from the 10-yard line. Remember, it's Kyle Coulter that recovered that fumbled snap from right. Van Pelt a year ago that led to that winning field goal. Look at what they've done inside the 20 this season. Haney looking, pressure, throws, you just got rid of it. And there's a 
what a lot of freshmen wouldn't do, just throw the ball away. And Dan Hammersmith went into that. One of the hardest things to teach a young quarterback is when to give up on a play. Because if you're competitive, and we've already seen that Haney is, you don't want to give up on a play. But that is a great decision. Sometimes as a quarterback, it's no play at all is the best play. Haney out of Corny, Texas. He threw for 28 touchdowns, just three interceptions as a senior. His family, football junkies. He's a football junkie. Big second and 10 here. Looking, backside pressure, he's hit. And they're gonna rule this a incomplete pass. Getting up and running with it was Marcus Parker, but Mike Mahorek, there he is, number 56, with that pressure to knock it out of his hand. And Fashola is coming off the edge as well. You have to understand, against New Mexico, you don't have time because of the pressure that they consistently bring off the edge. You have to understand that you're going to get it from backside if you stop and wait too long. They're 6 of 14 on third downs. Haney has gone deep to come up with some big conversions. This will be a third and goal from the 10 yard line. Walker and Anderson to the near side, Osborne to the top. Haney in the pocket, over the middle, Anderson to catch, and he cannot break the tackle of Fulbright, and he's dropped at the eight yard line after a short game. Well, still though, a field goal here draws you within six from the Colorado State perspective. It's, it was a good drive for them. Well, and from the perspective that it was a huge answer to that that 69-yard touchdown pass to Basquette, they needed, Colorado State needed to answer in some form. Babcock, senior from Tampa, three for three from this distance in this range. This will be a 24-yarder. The kick on the way, and it's good. And we have a six-point game. Sonny Lubick's team with a solid drive. They get some points, and they're down by six. Here in Fort Collins, Colorado. Mexico in front of Colorado State, 23-17, after the Rams come up with a good drive that results in a Jeff Babcock field goal to draw within one score here with 9.36 to go. Kevin Walton. And Marcus Smith, the tandem for the Lobos, awaiting this kick from Kevin Mark. This one hanging in the balance, key game in the Mountain West. And it's going to be Smith from the goal line to the 20, and knocked down at the 22-yard line. We talked in the open about how good Dontrell Moore is, and he's putting up one of those special days again, Kelly rushing the football has gotten better it seems as the game goes on you're right and good running backs do that and they do that for a couple of reasons one they're in shape to carry the load and two their offensive line is wearing out the defense so the defense is getting weaker and that makes the running back stronger this time he's going to line up again as a wide receiver in that trips formation dd cox is in as a running back standing next to mckinney in the backfield and it's going to be Cox on the handoff. He fumbles the football at the 23. Do the Rams have it? They're going to say no. It appeared he lost the football after a short gain. Cox getting a carry there. Let's take a look. We were just talking about Colorado State needing a big play. That might have been their opportunity right there. Atkins poked it free, but they say he was down. No, I think they said that um, New Mexico jumped on the football. I think New oh, Mexico think, recovered. Okay, they did recover then. At one point, that ball was like, definitely out. Yeah, it clearly was out, but it appeared at one point they were going to rule him down. But a big break that the Lobos keep the football on second and eight. And Moore is just blown up in the backfield. Atkins was in there. That's back-to-back -back plays he's been a big factor in. Yeah, and Cox goes in there and puts one on the ground, and guess who's in there to carry the ball next? Dontrell Moore, and I would expect it to be in his hands the rest of this football game. Well, they're keyed on uh, the running game now. Two carries, no yards. Well, we talked about McCamey's going to have to make some plays in the passing game. He did last series. He needs to do it right here on third and ten. Two backs. Next to McKamey, a three-receiver set. The Rams fans backing their defense. 
Matini looking near side. Through the hands of Moore, incomplete. Herbert was in the vicinity and had a chance on the deflection there, and they'll have to punt the football. And that play wasn't going to get a first down anyway. Weak side blitz from Colorado State. They got enough pressure. He had to go to his outlet receiver, which was more right there. And that one was high and wide, but it wasn't going to result in a conversion anyway. Tyler Goss standing at his seven-yard line. There's David Anderson, the dangerous one. As the punt returner for Colorado State, he's inside his 35. Rams a chance to take the lead to get the football back here, trailing by only six points. Short kick, Anderson comes up on it on the 42, and he's knocked down at the 44-yard line. And a nice open field tackle by Marcus Smith. We'll take a break with 7.49 to go from Sonny Lubick Field. This one hanging in the balance. It's where the lights always shine. Team, the Lobos lead the Rams. We have a famous guy in our midst here in Fort Collins, Colorado, as we turn back the clock. You've got to be kidding me. Number 12, look at the poise in the pocket, the command of the huddle, and delivering strikes all over the football field. Kelly Stopper. And there he is. That was after we beat BYU, one of those highlights. Long time ago, it seems like, Trey. Time flies. I'm sure you had some great memories uh, coming back. Uh, you've been back here a few times, but uh, I'm sure it's special every time. There's a catch made by Walker, and he's dropped for a loss back to the 39. You uh, look pretty good in the, the green and uh, gold of Colorado State. Yeah, they've changed the colors, actually, since then. Now they're a Las Vegas gold and forest green, and I think that look right there looks a lot better than what you just saw on the screen. Well, you, you mentioned your connection with uh, Hammerschmidt, the offensive coordinator, and, of course, Sonny Lubick, and it's amazing. Since you were there, the success they've had. Oh, yeah, and it started when Sonny came back. He left to go to Stanford, ended up at Miami as a defensive coordinator. When he came back, things changed drastically. Second and 15 after the loss on the catch by Walker as we hit the seven-minute mark here. Big drive here for the Rams. Haney in trouble. He's going to take off for the football. Midfield, and he rams forward close to the first down. He needed to get to the 46, and he's going to be close. It's going to be a third and short, it appears. A lot of times, New Mexico ends up in man-to-man -man defense. Quarterback has a lot of room. If you can scramble, it's like the parting of the Red Sea because all the defenders have run out of there covering tight ends and wide receivers. Good heads-up play. Sonny Lubick Field is the site. Hughes Stadium, New Mexico, Colorado State, the key Mountain West Conference game. The Rams coming in, 2-1 and one in conference play, trying to move to 3-1 and one and stay right behind Utah. New Mexico has a chance to move to 3-2 and two in conference and improve their overall record to 5-4. and four. Big third and short. Handoff straight ahead. Green, and he has a first down. Inside the 45-yard line. Power football that time, and they get it done. You know, going back to that highlight of me throwing the football, our producer, Lou Cussero, was yes. from here. And he was one of those juvenile delinquents that were throwing beer and hot dogs at us in the stands. Hey, he has a lot of fans in this area. I've been talking to a few of them. He is well known here in the front range. Scott Barkey, the director, they've done a great job here. And we anticipated this being a close game and has not disappointed. First down from the 44-yard line. Handoff green up the middle, inside the 40, down to the 35-yard line. Running between the tackles successfully. We haven't seen a lot of that today. We haven't seen hardly any of it, but it's because of the success that Colorado State has had throwing the football. Throw the football well, and it takes pressure. It loosens up the defense, and then you can get that zone run going. Colorado State is no slouch at running the football either. When, when Holland was playing, I think they relied a little bit too much on the pass because he is just so good throwing the football down the field. I think with Haney, they're finding their running game once again. With most of those rushing yards on this drive. Holland, of course, broken ankle, played six games, big loss, but Haney's done a nice job stepping in. Couldn't ask much more from a freshman on second and short green, and it looks like he has the first down inside the 34-yard line. And it's just smash mouth football here. This is what you expect to see most of the time from New Mexico. 
Well, Colorado State is very big up front. They're very good at the center and tackle positions. Their guards have had to kind of learn on the run. They're young at their guard position with Day and, and uh, Oldenburg. But they're starting to get it going. But one thing you have to do is count on and be patient with the run and give that offensive line an opportunity to get it going. He appeared to clearly have the first down, but they're going to bring the sticks out. <laughs> first down by the nose of the football. He clearly had it by, <laughs> by the strike. But that's where Green is effective, too. Between the tackles, running north and south, running downhill. You can see Haney. I mean, look at those passing numbers. Rushing, I mean, he's not going to run the football. He had the good run on the scramble just a minute ago. But if he can be effective throwing, their running game will be effective because of that. Clearly his best game passing at 167 in his first start against Wyoming, 115 against San Diego State. Big pass plays here today. First down from the 34-yard line. Haney play action. Rolling right, double, two guys after him, throws downfield incomplete. And it, he appeared to just throw that out of bounds. Anderson was down there, but wasn't going to get to the football. And it was just one of, another one of those really good decisions. There was nothing there. Play action, boot, he gets outside, has a good clean look at it. And you have one, you have really three receivers at three different levels, deep, medium, and short, covered perfectly by New Mexico. Throw it to a cheerleader and line up on second down. Osborne's been the big play guy for Sonny Lubick. Anderson's been a big play guy. We haven't seen Dreesen come up with a big play. Maybe this is the time. Second and 10 from the 34. Haney looking. Tipped, intercepted by Brandon Payne. He takes it down the far sideline and finally tackled by Haney inside the 40. Anderson is down. After the deflection, Payne was in the right place at the right time. His fifth pick, he's the Mountain West Conference leader in that category. And what Colorado State was doing is running a crossing route. You can see number four, Anderson, but they were expecting to get man-to-man -man defense, and they got zone. And number four, Anderson just got blown up. A big time turnover as New Mexico has the football after the 32 yard interception return. <laughs> Cornerback Brandon Payne with an interception off the deflection off the hand of David Anderson, setting up the Lobos in great shape with four and a half minutes to go. It appeared Colorado State was driving for the go ahead score. And the Lobos, who are so good at taking the ball away, 21 takeaways, second in the nation in that category. They get a big one. First down from the 38 now. The New Mexico offense on the field. McKamey straight ahead. Moore, short yardage to the 35. Let's take a look at the Mountain West Conference standings, the importance of this one. You can see what it would mean for the Rams to get a victory, staying a game back of Utah and with BYU. Important for New Mexico. They got a chance to get their fifth win here. You're right, and they got to get bowl eligible, and then those three bowls that this conference is tied to. Obviously, everyone's shooting for a, a showdown with Utah. Utah already beat New Mexico, so they don't have a shot at it. But look at BYU, Colorado State, if they can pull this off. The Air Force is still in the hunt. Yeah, it's been a great race. Second and seven from the 35. Handoff. Nothing there. Up the middle for D.D. Cox. It'll be third down and long. Let's take a look now at the Cooper Tire defensive player of the game, and I don't think this is a big surprise. Big time to come up with a big play. You know, and he leads the country Ooh, in pass breakups coming into this game, and he did a great job on that play. Right play, right time. Timeout is called here with 3.43 to go in this one. New Mexico up six with the football. The roll, 23-17 New Mexico, third and seven for the Lobos at the Colorado State 35-yard line. Rams need a stop. They'd like to force a long field goal here, keep this a one-score game. Shotgun formation for Cole McCamey and company. Time in the pocket. Pump fakes, now takes off. He gets a couple yards and that's it. Great play from the backside that time from Colorado State, Terrence Carter, the junior from Topeka, Kansas. It will set up a fourth down. Now the question is, do you bring the kicking team out there if you're Rocky Long? 
I think you have to. What are your What are your other options here? It's going to be a long field goal, but when well, you set up the Rams in great shape, if you can't make the field goal, yeah, Wes Wes Dunker is this is his reputation right here. He's hit some big field goals in his time, and you get him on the field and you make him come through. That's what he's there for. Now the wind is against him a little bit. It's blowing in from the south just a tad. But you mentioned it. He's first team All Mountain West. He's nailed a 46, 21 yarder. Missed a kick from 48. But this guy's one of the best. Senior from New Braunfels, Texas. Good use of timeouts, I think, by Colorado State right there. They used two of them. Too much time would have gone off the clock, and plus you have a good opportunity to set up whatever your best field goal block play is. Zunker will try to make this a nine-point game. This will be a 50-yarder. The key the is hole. to get pressure up the middle because long field goals tend to be low. McKamey the holder. Stationed in the middle of the field. Kick on the way from Zucker. Plenty of leg, and the kick is good. And that is a big boost to the Lobos here with 326 to go. Yeah, it really doesn't get much bigger than that. A little over 50 yards. This is defensive coordinator Steve Stenard. His defense did what it was supposed to do. The offense put him in a bad place once again with the tip ball turnover. His defense held him for a long field goal, and Zunker just came through. 50-yarder, four field goals for Zunker, and Rocky Long now has the luxury of knowing he's up nine points. A score does not beat him here. Still 326 to go, but you mentioned it. No timeouts for Colorado yeah, State. Yeah, Colorado State had to use both of their timeouts. They burned one earlier in this half, and they just used the, the other two. But remember, the clock stops on first downs in college football. They'll have that, but basically you have to work the sidelines. But let's not forget, we're talking about a freshman quarterback that now has to go get a quick score using the hurry-up offense. Zunker now 11 out of 14 on the year after the four field goals. And there's a look at Haney, and he will be a marked man. I mean, this is tough for a freshman knowing you're behind. Uh, they talk about Elway and the, the, the great guys that come up with big drives. He's going to be asked to come up with two big drives to pull this one out of the fire. Well, and it will be great experience for him somewhere down the line, but it's a tough situation today based on his maturity and experience. Sunker to kick it away with the Lobos up by nine. Short kick. Well, Sunker helps him out. Out of, bounds. out of bounds. Boy, that really helps Haney and companies. Odds here, they'll start from the 35. We have a flag on the play. It, I mean, Zunker really helped Colorado State out, if the, unless this is against them. Free kick out of bound, number 30 there kicking team. Colorado State is allowed to take the ball at the 35 yard line, first down. So Zunker, as good as he has been, that is a, a big negative there. First down from the 35 for the Rams. Three receivers. They need a touchdown and a field goal with only 326 on the clock. Haney, plenty of time over the middle. Anderson, first down and more. 40. And he's not out of bounds by New Mexico inside the 35-yard line. Every time they throw his way, with the exception of a tip ball that was behind him, he has been affected 33 yards there. Well, a lot of times receivers get big plays on in routes, and then they come out the backside. Good throw in traffic over a defender, and then it's coming out that backside where Anderson is very good at getting yards after the catch. Stops the clock with 318 to go. Anderson and Walker to the near side, Osborne to the top of the screen. Six catches now for Anderson. Haney pressured in the pocket, in trouble, and he's going to be dropped back at the 37. Nick Spiegel was in there on the initial charge. And all the while, the clock obviously is continuing to tick. Now three minutes remaining in this one at Fort Collins. Sonny Lubick's team coming in, playing so well, coming off the victory over Wyoming. They've had moments here. Backside pressure, and Haney's hit and dropped. And that was 
Fala Fashola, the speedy linebacker. He's a senior, very vocal, emotional leader, has great speed at that position. Watch 33 Fashola at the top on the edge. Colorado State knew this going in. They, New Mexico always pressures off the edge. That's his fourth sack of the year. And a loss of big time loss. It's now third down and 25 for Haney. Has all kinds of time. Throws underneath to Anderson to the 41. Well short of the first down. They're still going to have a fourth down and about 20 yards to go. Fulbright on the tackle. And the reason why Fashola was so free is they overload the opposite side so there just isn't enough offensive linemen to protect the edge away from the play fourth and 18 to have any chance they got to convert right here haney looking incomplete Warner walker and that's going to do it they will turn it over on downs with 147 to go no timeouts and the lobos are going to come into fort collins and come up with a huge victory Fans leaving here, disappointing. Uh, second straight year they've lost to New Mexico. And Sonny Lubick, uh, it's been the Dontrell Moore story the last couple of years. It really has. The Dontrell Moore story, but also this game was about which team could play the cleanest. And it wasn't Colorado State today. They came out and absolutely botched the game in every way to start this second half. And they gave this New Mexico team the window of opportunity they were looking for. 147 to go, and they're going to put the cap on this one as Moore celebrating with D.D. Cox and that offense that seemed to get better. They, they came up with uh, some key turnovers and cashed in, but their running game really improved in the second half. McKinney is knocked down at the 34-yard line. Let's take a look at our Outback Steakhouse outstanding back of the game. And it's Dontrell Moore with 154 yards. Over 200 last year against the Rams. 154 on the ground today. Look at those numbers. <laughs> yeah, those are amazing. Now that's about probably 25% of his yards in his entire career came against Colorado State. And we mentioned Mount West Conference career rushing leader, All-America candidate. How can you argue? I mean, he, yeah, you'd he, have to say one of the top running backs in the country with the numbers he puts up. And McKamey's just going to take a knee back at the 24-yard line with under a minute to go now. The only reason that you would argue about that, Trey, is that it, you don't get to see him very often. And that happens with a lot of those so-called experts. But this guy right here, Anderson, is a competitor. He'll come back. He won't allow this team to quit. He will continue to play hard. And basically what Colorado State has to do now is run the table. They go to Salt Lake City next week to play Utah. They go to um, Air Force after that. Yep. So, I mean, they have their work cut out for them. But, you know, they, they're going to have to have a huge effort a week from now against a very good Utah team. And New Mexico, you got to start talking about the Lobos a little bit more now at BYU and then Wyoming at home. Yeah. So they got a chance to finish strong. At BYU is going to be a huge game because BYU is really in a great position right now. They're playing very well, first of all, but they also have Utah the last game of the year. 26 to 17, the final score here in Fort Collins. Rocky Long's team beating Sonny Lubick's team. A big road victory for the Lobos as they improve their overall record to five and four. They're now three and two in the conference. Colorado State falls to three and five, two and two in conference play. Nick Spiegel had a big game defensively and the rushing attack was impressive. Here's Amory Anderson with Rocky Long. Coach, in the second half offensively, your team, t team came alive. What was the spark? Well, I, we were just doing the same things we did the first half. We just executed better. And I, I think the big pass play that went for a touchdown probably was the biggest play in the game. It, it got us a little momentum, and then the defense hung in there, and we won the game. You capitalized on some turnovers as well. You said coming into this game, you put more pressure on your corners than anybody else in the league. How is it that time and time again they come up with the big play? Well, I don't made a big play at the end of the game I, I thought they got uh, they didn't cover very well most of the game I, I thought we gave up some long third and long situations where they completed some balls when we were in man-to-man -man coverage now they made a big play at the end that helped us win it but we got to play better coverage than that defensively you're some people have called you a genius what is, I know what is it on, on today's game that you saw defensively that you did like 
Well, our players, I'm really proud of our players on both offense and defense. What we are is not very talented, but we play extremely hard. And, and I thought the players hung in there when things weren't going very well, and they just kept playing hard enough to make some plays, and we won the game. Thanks very much, Coach. Thank you. Trey, back to you. Thank you, Anne-Marie. Rocky Long's had some big wins this year. He beat Texas Tech, and he gets a huge road win in conference play over Colorado State. Back after this. Colorado, the Rams in front of the Lobos, 7-3 at the break. One big play, special teams, defense. That's been the story for Colorado State. Yeah, it really has. The defense is controlling the tempo. The offense is just trying to hit big plays and not screw it up, to be quite honest with you. There was a lot of highlights defensively. Time now for the Sonic Flashback, brought to you by America's Drive-In. This is the one big play offensively. Caleb Haney made a great throw to Dustin Osborne, took advantage, a new wrinkle off their bootleg. But really, the big plays have come in the kicking game. Babcock, this is a rocket of 89 yards when New Mexico was believing they were going to inherit great field position, and then he pinned them inside the two-yard line after that. Time now for the first half stats, brought to you by Quest. Nothing that jumps out. Colorado State cannot run the football against this team, so you better be able to get something out of the passing game, and they are 107 yards there, and that's really the difference with the big play to Osborne being the difference on the scoreboard. A first quarter touchdown pass for the home team, a second quarter field goal for the visitors from Albuquerque. That's it. Interesting second half coming up. In a rhythm, why is that? Well, we're making some mistakes. Uh, we're not executing very well or consistently. We're making some good plays. We're just not making them play after play after play. Now you got to give their defense a little credit for that too. You know, they have to make some plays to keep us from getting in the end zone, but hopefully we'll be more consistent this half. Thank you, coach. Guys, back to you. And Marie, well, defense, I, I think both coaches have to be proud of what they've seen on that side of the football. I think particularly for Colorado State. New Mexico, we expect that. Colorado State, especially the last two weeks of this season, have been playing at a very high level. Here's a look at Wes Zunker, who provided the only scoring for the Lobos with a 46-yard field goal. He has it teed up, and we're ready to go. Second half from Sunny Lubick Field in Fort Collins. Deep men for Colorado State, Morton and Yonarice. Morton will receive the football, and it'll be a touchback. They'll start first down from the 20-yard line. We talked about these quarterbacks, young but very good and getting better. Here's a look at the comparison thus far. You know, the big difference is the passing yards. Haney has made a play in the passing game. McCamey has missed a couple of open receivers that would have resulted in third down conversions, and they're basically doing an efficient job, but McCamey has to be more efficient in this half. Now, we knew Haney would be facing a, a faster pace against the Lobos with the blitz schemes. Uh, McKamey uh, has some people around him that can make plays. It'll be interesting to see how this plays out. Haney's going to put it up in the air, tries to, but fumbles the football, and then he's hammered, escapes that pressure, and then he loses it. It's loose at the 10-yard line. New Mexico says they have it, and they do. The Lobos get the recovery from Fala Fashola, and that was a case, Kelly, where he should have just eaten the football. He tried to do too much with it, maybe. Sometimes the best play is throw the ball away and make no play at all. Right here, the play's dead. You have to do something else with it, and especially right here. He was going to throw that ball away, and Dan Hammersmith made that point. Sometimes for a young quarterback, the last thing they learned is when you give up. To learn is when you give up on a play, that time he needed to give up on that play way early. Marcus Parker, the nose tackle, hit him initially, and then Fashola was there for the recovery, and New Mexico a golden opportunity First and 10 at the Rams 11 yard line as we open up this third quarter. We'll go with Moore, the single running back. He'll get the handoff, trying to bend it to the outside. Off left tackle and three yards maybe, and that's it. Shut down there. The ball now comes free, and the Rams saying they have it, but they're going to whistle this play dead at the eight yard line. New Mexico comes right out with three tight ends in the football game, and that's an indication of what they want to do. I think they, they certainly want to do this in the red zone, but I think we'll see more of this power type of running game out in the field as well. He moves the football to the six yard line. Second down and five, as you can see what they have done in the red zone. Very impressive and trying to cash in here. Trips, 
That formation stacked to the top of the screen. Man in motion is Moore, who gets the handoff, and he takes it down to the four-yard line for a couple. Luke Atkins on the tackle from his weak side linebacker spot. And Colorado State needs to tackle well. They were doing it early in the game on that first play that Moore ran um, in the red zone the play before. They had two missed tackles before they finally got him on the ground. So third and three, you have to, if you're Colorado State, still be worried about the run here with Moore, then they're going to load it up, that power backfield. And they can still get a first down inside the one. Brody and Moore in the eye set. Smith is the lone receiver to the near side. Play action. McKinney pressure, throws off his back foot, and incomplete. He wanted Logan Hall to tight end in the back of the end zone. Okay, Trey, what do you do right here? I think you take the points. Take the points on the board. And I see the, uh, let's see, do, do you see the kicker? No, I see the power running game being put on the field is what I see. Well, this is a bit of a gamble here, fourth and three. Bird is in there, as you see. Bird is Zucker, in there, 30, Zucker. there they, are gonna, okay. they are gonna bring the kicking team out. And this is the right decision here early in the third quarter, trailing 7-3. Zunker. 8 of 11, he nailed a 46-yarder in the second quarter. Snap good, and the kick is good. So New Mexico gets it inside the 10. They fail to get a touchdown. They do get a 21-yard field goal off the foot of Wes Sunker. Gets a little bit tighter here in Fort Collins. It's 7 to 6. Closer, 7 to 6 as we start this third quarter. 21-yard field goal by first-team All-Mountain West kicker, Wes Sunker, after a turnover. Colorado State may have dodged a bullet as they hold New Mexico to just three points. Yeah, a tremendous job by Colorado State's defense. Dodge a bullet is exactly right, and I think New Mexico has to be disappointed. You get the ball in a turnover at the plus 11, and you only get three points. Zunker puts his foot into the pigskin, and it'll be Morton at his goal line. Trying to get to the far side. Great coverage by the Lobos. Closing that one down as he's knocked down at the 10-yard line. Quincy Black on the tackle. It's a very interesting position for a young quarterback to come back onto the field after a play like this. You turn the ball over. Your defense did you a great favor by holding him out of the end zone. But now we'll see what kind of poise this young man has, but come back and see what he does on this series. Prior to this game, he was picked off a couple times, but had been making great decisions for a freshman. He gets the football. We'll start from the 10-yard line here with the I formation behind him. Green is the running back. He'll get the handoff, trying to bend it to the outside for a couple as they string it out well for a short game. Good pursuit that time by Bala Fushola, the outside linebacker. Look at the first drive. Kelly and then since then and that's similar to what Wyoming did against Colorado State last week you're right and the difference is Colorado State's defense is responding to the challenge when your offense isn't getting it done you just have to buckle it a little bit tighter and go out and keep the opposition out of the end zone single running back this time Green Osborne is in motion as he bunches up near the line of scrimmage Green gets a handoff across the 15 out to the 17 still moving the pile forward Great surge there, but he'll still be a couple yards shy of the first down in the vicinity of the 19-yard line. And the key in what you just said, Trey, is a couple yards short of the fir first down. It's not five or more yards or six or more yards when all heck breaks loose as far as New Mexico's defense is concerned. This is the down and distance that this offense has to be in and that Dan Hammerschmidt right there really wants this offense to consistently be in. Get Haney out on the wing here. He's good on the rollout. They have a double tight end. There's Dreesen, the motion man. Haney's going to put the ball in the air. He gets pressure. He's tripped, keeps his balance, and then just throws it away. There is a flag as well in the defensive backfield as Haney goes down hard. That was thrown in the vicinity of Sperry, number 80, the tight end for Colorado State. Now they're going to tend to Haney here. He had a couple guys after him, was tripped up. Let's take a look. Holding. 
Defense number 89. The foul was against an eligible receiver. 10-yard penalty. My rule automatic first down. Thompson and Tui were there first, Kelly, and then it, it looked like uh, it's the drive into the ground at the end that usually results in the injury. Yeah. It's not it's not what happens before you go to the ground. It's getting driven into the ground that really sometimes is what hurts. Yeah, Tui is the guy that delivered the blow, and there's a look at Joey Carney, the backup. Just a sophomore, has rushed the ball just once this year, is a holder for the second straight season, but had just two pass attempts last year as a freshman. So talk about a tough situation for this guy replacing Heaney. First down from the 29-yard line from Highlands Ranch, Colorado. Flag is thrown as he hands off to Green, who's dropped for a loss of a couple in the backfield. I think the difference with Joey Carney being in the game is he's been in the program a while, and that will make a difference. He will be efficient in the little things, ball handling and that type of thing. And this is going to back up the Rams here. The loss of a couple. They're going to decline this, I think. Illegal formation offense. Number four was not on the line of scrimmage. Only six men on the line of scrimmage. Penalty's decline. Was all the play. Second down. And there's a good sign. Heaney is back in after the quick breather. He's back in, but he inherits a second and long once again in this offense. And this is the down and distance that you can get quickly into trouble against this Lobo defense. Green and Dreesen in the backfield. Second and 11, and now the officials will blow this play dead before it gets started. Colorado State. Rams will talk First charge team timeout this half. Number one. Maybe not a bad decision. Lubick and Haney will try to get on the same page here, facing a second and 11 from their own 28-yard line. Rams by a point. Welcome back to the Mountain West Conference Game of the Week. Fort Collins, Colorado, the site. Rams and Lobos, and a battle, defensive struggle. Colorado State in front, 7-6. Big first quarter touchdown pass from Caleb Haney, who is back in at the quarterback position. We're at Sunny Lubick Field, New Mexico and Colorado State meeting for the 52nd time in a key Mountain West game. Rams trying to hang on to second place in the conference. On play action, Haney stumbles and falls back at the 17-yard line. Tough break, but he did have some pressure from Mike Mohorek, the middle linebacker. Yeah, this series has really been a disaster for this young man. This is the same play that he hit his touchdown pass, 37 yards to Dustin Osborne earlier, and he just gets on his edge, like out skating on the pond. You get on your edge, you go down just like that. 12-yard loss, and Sonny Lubick's team now facing a third and 21 at their 18. This is th this makes a coach very old very quickly. Is a young quarterback in this type of down and distance consistently? They struggled on third down, and this would be a huge one if they could somehow pick it up. Three receivers motion on the near side. This will be against Colorado State as he airs it out, and that is it picked off. It is out of bounds. Almost picked off on the far side by Gerald Malone, the junior from Rowlett, Texas. But this will. Uh, be declined, I think, and they will punt the football. So an incomplete pass. Illegal shift. Offense. Two men went in motion. One man sat, the other one did not. Penalties declined. Was able to play a fourth down. You see Dan Hammerschmidt following the young quarterback down the sideline. That's exactly why Dan Hammerschmidt, the offensive coordinator, is on the sidelines. For a disastrous start to a second half just like that, he'll get in the young man's ear, he'll settle him down and say, listen, forget about that. We go out the next time and you do things fundamentally correct. Babcock looking for another boomer as he stands inside his 10. And this one end over end kick returnable. Daniel Ramirez at his own 45. Gets a block near side. Rams 40, 30. Cuts inside the 25 and down to the 23-yard line. Daniel Ramirez got a nice block, but he did a lot of that on his own on the near sideline. He sets up the Lobos in great shape, and they have a chance to take the lead even with a field goal. Special teams play good for the Rams most of the day, not here. Take note of zero hang time, and this is the result, a low line drive, punt a lot of times results in a very good return questionable at the top there could have been a block in the back 
you'll see at the end here, Babcock is blocked in the back right there. Neither one of them were called, but you have to go with it. 36-yard punt, big return. Longest punt return against the Rams this year. First down from the 22-yard line. Handoff, Moore, 15. He has a first down, and he drags the tackler, Lance Cicero, inside the 10, and there's a Ram down behind the line of scrimmage. And that's Jamal Hall, the linebacker. And an official's timeout here. Dontrell Moore, 86 yards rushing first half. Century mark with inside again. Join the Pac-10 and the Mountain West at this year's Pioneer Pure Vision Las Vegas Bowl. This December 23rd, come to Las Vegas for the ultimate in football and entertainment. For tickets, log on to LV Bowl. Com. Sonny Lubick saw Haney go down, and now Jamal Hall getting up slowly. And it's not the healthiest linebacking core you've ever seen coming into this game. Courtney Jones was questionable. He's been on the field a great deal. At six feet tall, 180 pounds, Hall has to rely on speed and quickness, and that time he just got number 59, Robert Turner. Big body on him, and he didn't hold up very well. Lubick's defense has their backs to the wall now. First and goal, New Mexico at the seven yard line. This, you would think, is where the Lobos would go power game with Dontrell Moore. You would think so. They didn't the last time they were down here in the plus territory. Moore is the lone running back with two receivers. Balance set, double tight. He'll get the handoff straight ahead and easy sailing to the end zone. Touchdown, New Mexico as Dontrell Moore finds the end zone, his third rushing touchdown this season, and the Lobos are in front. Now the question, up 12-7, do you go for two here? And I think that's what they're gonna do. We'll see what the, um, I think there's an unsportsmanlike at the end of this play. Claude Terrell needs to take his big body back in the huddle and keep his mouth shut. This may hurt his team, and it might not be a question of whether they can go for two or not. 325-pound senior, Terrell, their left tackle. Well, that is, uh, that's really co real costly. So you've got to kick the extra point if you're backed up here, don't you? Oh, absolutely. That was a foolish penalty. It takes them out. It made the decision for the coach. Now, they're going to change uh, their look offensively now as more will come out. And it looks like they'll just uh, kick the uh, Yeah, Zunker's already in there. Point. They're yeah, going to kick the extra point. So, really, this is the right decision when you're backed up. You know, there are a couple things on that series that I really didn't like out of New Mexico. Dead ball, personal foul, offense number 76. 15-yard penalty will be enforced on the try. One on time down. It's that, that is one of them that I didn't like. After the play, Claude Terrell causing grief in the end zone, but also, 59, Robert Turner stood over Jamal Hall after he heard him, was counting him out like a boxer. I think that's Bush League. You need to play between the whistles and have a little class about you. Well, it's such an impressive drive from New Mexico uh, as they cash in with the touchdown. And this will be Zunker now, who's 19 of 19 in extra points this season. The kick on the way. And the kick is good. So a six-point lead for the Lobos. 9.48 to go third quarter. And more over the century mark once more. That doesn't surprise you. They're playing Colorado State. He absolutely loves to play against his 4-3 Tampa defense. And this is what New Mexico has to do more of. Just hand the ball off behind an absolutely gigantic offensive line and let Moore figure out where to run the football. He's very good at it. He does a good job of making decisions behind the line of scrimmage. Get the young man the football and let him do something with it. That was a big run for more than one reason. Now 40 touchdowns, all-time Lobo leader, passing Terrence Mathis, who's <laughs> put together some great seasons as a receiver in the NFL. And if you're Colorado State right now, you need something big to happen in your favor. And it can come right here on this kick return. It doesn't matter how it happens, but it better happen quickly. So miscues. First the fumble by Haney, then 
the punt. It was a returnable punt that set up New Mexico in great shape, and they're in front now, 13 to seven, trying to improve their overall record to five and four. With 9.48 to go third quarter, let's see how the Rams answer. Zunker with a short kick this time. It'll be Damon Morton at his seven yard line. And he's hammering up the 17, and the ball comes free, and I think the Lobos have it. Unless they rule it dead, the Lobos have the football, and they do at the 17 yard line. Absolutely Morton lost it. Disastrous for Colorado State. And New Mexico is second in the entire country in takeaways, and you've seen it here in the second half of why that is. They're tenacious, they're relentless, they get a lot of hats around the football, they fly around, they love to play a game, and if you're Colorado State, you better find a, a way to change this momentum real quick. You saw number 45, Joe Sealander, he's a guy that jumped on it. Yeah, and that ball was, was absolutely out. You have to secure the football against this team. Big special teams play, and uh, there's what New Mexico has done, second in the nation. They continue to do it week in and week out. Hand off Moore inside the 15, and he rams forward to the 13-yard line for five yards. New Mexico is doing exactly the right thing, Trey. This Co Colorado State defense has been on the field a long time already in the second half. Put those big bodies on them up front and let Dontrell do just that. I mean, there was nothing at the point of attack. He has good vision, cuts it back, gets the most out of that play. But right now, you have the opportunity just to roll up this Colorado State defense. Second and four at the Rams' 12-yard line. Moore, seven yards deep. They run the option to the near side, the pitch to Moore. And he shut down. He lost a yard back to the 14. Pauly was over there from his linebacker spot and also Daryl Williams from his corner spot. Here's Anne Marie. Moore is uh, one of the University of New Mexico 2004 Beefmaster Award winners. Every spring, the Lobos have a competition called the Night of Champions, which is a type of strongman competition designed by strength coach Mark Paulson. The contest consists of four lifts, bench, squat, power clean, and incline. Moore is one of those players, they say, who gets stronger as the season goes on. And that may be why the running back's hitting his stride right now. You're right, you might like him to touch the ball 30 to 40 times. He'll be at that number, maybe more. McKinney rolling out, throwing back against the green for more, and incomplete. Good coverage over there as Brandon Cathy, the sophomore from Liberty, Missouri, was right on him. Play action, Pat. Boot pass one way, and they're throwing back to Dontrell Moore. He fakes it to him there, and McKinney has him in mind all along sell it and then look back. Kathy did a good job of being disciplined and staying home and actually had an opportunity to break on that ball and come up with a huge play. Zunker now on the field is connected from 46 and 21 yards. A 31 yard attempt and trying to make this a two score game and the kick is good. Big three points for New Mexico as Zunker splits the uprights, the Lou Groza Award candidate. Sonny Lubick's team with some errors that have been costly here in the third quarter, and New Mexico now has a 16 to seven lead. Well, and that's amazing to think about it. The score's only 16 to seven. The way the second half has looked, you would have thought they were down by three touchdowns. Yeah. But that's the good news. But the bad news is Colorado State hasn't looked anywhere close to being able to do anything to get points on the board in the last couple of quarters. The Rams are looking for a big play. They knew they wouldn't have a lot of long drives against this New Mexico team, but they expected to break some big ones. They've only had that one in the first quarter. The, the nature of this New Mexico defense is to create a lot of minus plays and ugly plays for the opposition. And the thing that you have to do if you're Dan Hammerschmidt, you stay patient with the running game and you just pick your spots to make big plays in the passing game. Maybe get the ball in the hands of David Anderson. Yeah, they had to rush the ball coming in. They have done that totally ineffectively. So the next step is get something out of the passing game, and number four would be a good choice. You're right. Robert Herbert and Damon Morton back deep for the Rams as Zunker will kick it away. 16-7 New Mexico. He trailed 7-3 at halftime. It'll be Morton at the goal line. Trying to run across the field, and he's knocked down at the seven-yard line. New Mexico got down there so quickly in coverage, he had nowhere to go. Haney good in the first half, not so good second half. Let's take a look. Well, this resembles something like a freshman would do when he's playing. 
dribbles the football, not real good ball security, doesn't know when to give up on the play, and then slips and falls down. That happens every day. But what's important right now is what do you do with this drive, Caleb Haney? Three of three on the first drive. The touchdown pass, four of 11 since then, and the costly turnover. This time starting from the seven-yard line. Handoff, Jimmy Green trying to get to the outside. He can't get there. And there's the speed on the outside from Nick Spiegel, among others. They run sideline to sideline so well. Well, and Jimmy Green's game is not sideline to sideline. It's between the tackles. Wow, look at that right there. Colorado State, there's 80 on the first drive of the game, and you can see how the tide has turned since then. But what's happening right now, mistakes by Colorado State, and New Mexico is kind of finding their footing a little bit, and they're starting to get physical, and Don Terrell Moore is starting to gash them a little bit. Second and eight, Osborne and Anderson are the receivers here. Let's see if Haney maybe tries to go up top a little bit. He's got a good arm, play action, rolling. Far side, catch made for short yardage by Dreesen out to the 11-yard line. Give him two, maybe three, that's it. It's going to be a third and long. Kevin Walton, the strong safety on the tackle. And a third and long, which really is six or more against this New Mexico defense, is asking for disaster, especially when you're backed up because the defense has a little more freedom. When they have an offense backed up, they will take more chances. And this is a Lobo defense and a Rocky Long that takes a lot of chances anyway. Yeah, yeah, and this time, Sonny Lubick will come out with three receivers. Walker, Anderson, and Osborne are in there. On third and six, Haney trying to keep the drive going, fires it for Anderson. He makes a big catch across the 35 and knocked down at the 38-yard line. What a pass over the top by Haney. Yards on the, play. the pass was good enough in this down and distance backed up. This is a great pass, but watch the body control at the end here. He turned completely around in the air and came down with this football. He will have another look at it right at the end over the wrong shoulder, but a good receiver will adjust and make a young quarterback look awfully good in the end. 28-yard pickup, uh, the best athlete on the field showing why with that grab. First down now from the 40-yard line for the Rams. Looking for a spark here in the third quarter. Haney setting up the screen. It's Anderson. Anderson has room to roll. First down and more into New Mexico territory. And then a flag comes in, a late hit out of bounds. They'll tack on 15 more. Well, what better guy to spark this offense than number four? Well, did we not just talk about that, yep. Trey? You talked about getting their playmaker the football. You're going to add another 15 at the end of this. There's the man right there. He has to touch the ball. After the play, it ended. Dead ball. Personal foul. Defense number 89. 15 yards. Enforced from the end of the run. Automatic first down. Spiegel. We talked about the way that you need to get this young man, your playmaker, the football. He almost had his knee on the ground right there. Very fortunate they didn't call it. But this is exactly what he can do. Yards after the catch. They're not going to throw the ball downfield. Let's check in with Anne Marie. Well, Kelly, you know last week from the border war that David Anderson didn't catch a pass all game. He didn't seem to be too upset about it. He's beloved by this team for the selfless play. I'll continue in a minute. Jimmy Green for a yard, and that's about it. Yeah, he does so much more, Anne Marie, than just catch the football. Well, the Rams sports information director also happens to be the team's stat guy. And as Ella said that post game, he felt a little bad about the end of Anderson's streak of catching a pass in 19 consecutive games. He felt bad, that is, until he saw Anderson run and grab the bronze boot that CSU had just won in the border war. Ozella said that when he saw Anderson's elation post game in the locker room last week, he realized it really was true that Anderson didn't care about personal stats, even though he's a semifinals for the Blitnikoff Award, and he's not seen as many passes as he did with Justin Holland. On second and 10 from the 24-yard line, Haney looking for Dreesen, the H-back, and he dives forward to get some extra yardage inside the 20, setting up a third and about five. You know, that's very, very good stuff for Man Marie. Sonny Lubick said an amazing thing. Here David Anderson is, one of the top receivers in the entire country, does not catch a pass, but this man right here said it was probably his best game as a wide receiver. That's pretty amazing, but he goes down to block defensive backs and tries to get pancake blocks. He doesn't go down there to shadow box. Here's what he's done today. He had 12 catches against BYU, 9 against USC. 
and he helps them in so many ways. Third and four, key play here from the 18-yard line from the gun. Haney over the middle, catch made near the goal line, touchdown, Walker. John Walker, the red shirt freshman, puts the Rams in the end zone. And how about a little poise from a freshman quarterback? Remember the disastrous start. He comes and makes a huge throw on third down, and then he comes down and throws his second touchdown pass of the game to Walker. 24-yard strike, and Haney really showed something. Bounce it back. He has something that, I mean, that is nothing about coaching. It's a little moxie, a little poise, and just trying to Get yourself up off the ground and make a play for your football team. Babcock, important PAT, and the kick is good, and it's now a two-point game. 5.50 to go third quarter. The freshman from 40, Texas, getting some help from Anderson, and then Walker, his team within two points. Dodge Dakota. The redshirt freshman from Lancaster, California, John Walker, big touchdown grab as Colorado State draws within two points of New Mexico here in Fort Collins, Colorado. Kevin Mark to kick it away. The deep men for the Lobos, Marcus Smith and Kevin Walton. Big drive by Heaney and company as they were had their backs to the wall a little bit on their heels, but they showed a lot getting a touchdown there. Big kick through the end zone, and New Mexico will start from the 20-yard line. Time now for the Arctic Cat drive of the game. And Walker's the receiver at the top. It's a dig route, which simply means a deep in route. The defender right there needs to hold that off. He doesn't stay underneath it. Very good catch in traffic and a very good throw by a freshman quarterback. Walker, their third receiver, and how about Haney? You know, we some guys just have it, and some don't. A lot of would, a lot of people just put their head in the sand, and uh, they'd be done the rest of the game. You can't get a worse start than they had in their second half, and he was right in the middle of the the eye of the storm, so to speak. But that is the what he showed on that last drive is exactly what Coach Dan Hammerschmidt, the offensive coordinator, and Sonny Luby talked about. He has poise beyond his years. They're going to re-kick this kickoff. There was an encroachment on Colorado State, so um, instead of the touchback, they'll tee it up again. Haney with two big touchdown drives, and in those drives, the one in the first quarter and then the one we just saw completed to Walker to cap it off, he was 8 for 8, 146 yards. Yeah, they need some more of that from him and a lot less of what he how he started this yeah. second half, and they need a big play from Babcock right here. Actually, it's going to be Mark that comes in. They need this ball in the end zone, and they need to play field position. This defense now is a question mark for Colorado State. New Mexico offensively was getting in a little rhythm. This defense from Colorado State needs to take them out of it real fast. Mark has 18 touchbacks this season. As he'll kick it away to Marcus Smith and Kevin Walton. You see him there back near the goal line. And talking about that Colorado State defense, New Mexico's last three drives started on the plus 11, the plus 22, and the plus 18. Two out of the three, they only gave them field goals. That yeah. could be huge before this day's done. Well, you're right. They uh, appeared to, to have a chance to put the game away. You get three instead of seven. Big difference there. They have the football now, the right football to kick it off. And Mark will do so after the encroachment. It'll be pushed back to the 30-yard line. Kevin Mark from Coral Springs, Florida. Short of the goal line. It'll be taken by Kevin Walton. And he tries to come to the near side, beats a man to the 35-yard line, and dragged down at the 39. Robert Herbert on the tackle for Colorado State. So New Mexico in front. And let's see how they respond now to that drive. Still have the lead, but this is tight, Kelly. And maybe they go to the bread and butter here, the rushing game. Yeah, I definitely would if I was I was calling the plays. And this Colorado State offense was reeling a little bit. And they come, this. Out, they come out in a bizarre formation. Two trips, one to the top, one to the bottom of the screen. They swing it out to Dontrell Moore, and he picks up four yards. And it was actually almost like a swinging gate. Some of those offensive linemen were out at wide receiver positions on that last play. Terrell was one of them, the big 325 pounder. Here's a look. Well, rest assured, Terrell's not going to get the football. It's just to spread him out, a little deception, but it only results in four yards. That's a whole lot of window dressing for four yards. I don't think I've ever seen that. Two 
Have you ever seen a 350-pound wide receiver? No, are you kidding me? Second down and six. This time, just three receivers out. Two running backs, handoff, Moore breaks free up the middle. He's into CSU territory and down to the 37-yard line. And there's his burst. Land Cicero on the tackle, or it could have gone for a lot more. And this is what Colorado State fears, is just line up, whether it's shotgun or not, power running game, and let Dontrell Moore out in space make people look silly a lot of times. 20-yard pickup there, and he's well over the century mark, and now threatening 200 again. As you look at the rush defense, it's been tough for this Rams team in that category. Three receivers again, and a handoff to Moore again. Up the middle, breaks a big one, and he's close to a first down, close to 10 yards there. Hall the tackle as they take it down to the 27. And remember, Trey, early in this game, any success that New Mexico was having was generally outside on the edge. And when you start getting gashed up the middle if you're Colorado State, that's usually not a good sign. And they're hoping for something positive, a turnover, but uh, tough when it's second and one when you have somebody like Moore in the backfield on the New Mexico side. Two receivers to the near side. Moore's going to get it. Starting to get the ball quite a bit more, and I think he needed just a yard and appears to have the first down inside the 27-yard line. Well, this is their philosophy, Kelly. They feel that they're going to get stronger in the fourth quarter rushing the football with those big guys leaning on people. Well, not only the big guys, but you have a very fit physical back behind them, and a beef master story that Ann Murray was talking about is exactly right. This guy can carry the load. A feature back that needs to touch the ball 35 to 40 times, you have to be fit to carry the load that much. Powers at this time with Bird in at the fullback spot in front of Moore. First down from the 26. Here's Moore again. Cuts back and is in trouble. And dropped for a loss back at the 33. Jonathan Simon, the nose tackle, was there. The senior, along with Jamal Hall from the linebacker spot, eight-yard loss. In the running game, Dontrell Moore usually makes good decisions. This isn't one of them. He cut back just a little bit too early. You have to force the point of attack to the line of scrimmage, and then the cutback naturally happens. It doesn't if you decide that about four yards deep in the backfield. Now the fullback Bird checks out as they're in a passing situation here, second and 14. Three receivers stacked. D.D. Cox is the lone running back in for Moore. Dontrell Moore is out here wide at the wide receiver position. On the near side, and Cox is going to get the handoff, and he shut down. Maybe got back to the line of scrimmage, and that was it, and it'll be third and long. Hall was there again. Hall's been all over, and there's Pauly as well, the middle linebacker. A lot of different looks from the Lobos. They continue to shuttle people in and out of there. And sometimes I think they fool themselves, to be quite honest with you. I mean, Moore's the guy that needs to be the workhorse behind, again, this massive offensive line. Sometimes I think you put yourself behind the eight ball, just like right here. This isn't an automatic third down situation for them. Moore's the running back this time. They're one of nine on third downs. Third and 15. McKamey. Play action. Has time in the pocket. Fires. Open his basket, and it's incomplete. He was open. That had a lot of mustard on it through the hands of the junior receiver. And this is where McCamey's game needs to improve. Play action pass. They're not fooling anybody at third and 15. He has a good look. You have to put this on him. The corner route that was just broken off because of the coverage. Basket is open. McCamey has to come up with that throw. Now this would be a season long for Wes Zucker. He has a little bit of a win behind his back and a 48-yarder from the right hash mark. The kick on the way, line drive kick, and it is no good. So Zucker, one of the top kickers in the country, first team all Mountain West, cannot connect there. He nailed 46 and 21-yard kicks earlier. And you have to give a, a boatload of credit to Colorado State's defense. Remember, Trey, this drive started with a good kick return because of a penalty on the first kickoff. New Mexico got started with very good field position, and they got zip out of it. Well, this also sets up the Rams in pretty good field position at their 31-yard line. They shift Dreesen and Martindale to the near side. 
the tight ends. Heaney rolling left, throwing to Dreesen, out of the backfield, and he takes it out of bounds after a five-yard pickup to the 37. Spiegel on the tackle. This guy is so good, Joel Dreesen. Second career receptions for tight ends. That guy's not CSU. bad either. Yeah. Spiegel and Dreesen, especially when they meet downfield. But Spiegel's the one that is responsible for covering the tight end as he goes out in the flat end of that boot. It's very deceptive, but you have to be disciplined, and he did a pretty decent job that time. Six-yard pickup, second and four. Anderson's the motion man for the Rams. Haney hands it off to Green. A yard, maybe two, as he inches up to the 39. Let's take a look at some scores in college football. The ESPN USA Today Top 25, the Sooners hanging on in Stillwater. And we, we have extracurricular activity on the field that we're not going to see, but they threw a flag, unsportsmanlike, on somebody. And Georgia looking good against the Gators on home turf. Offsetting personal foul penalties. We just talked about Joel Dreesen. He was right in the middle of that. After the play had ended, dead ball, personal foul, defense number 33. Dead ball, personal foul, offense number 74. Penalties offset, fourth down. Excuse me, fourth down. Now it should, it should be, be third, third down. down. Yeah, it should be third That's and two. That's a mistake. Third and two from the 39. Third down. Thank you, Carl. They've had a lot to sort out here in the last quarter in terms of penalties. And this is a big play. Third and two from their 39 as Anderson checks in from the sideline. Huge play right here. This needs to be a conversion if you're Colorado State fan. Anderson, the lone receiver. Double tight end alignment. Green is the lone running back. Haney hands it off to Green, trying to stretch it over tackle. He's got the first down and more to the 43-yard line. Pick up a four, and they move the chains. Well, Green has been so good the last couple weeks. And this is a good case of Colorado State motioning an extra tight end into the point of attack and running right at the overload from New Mexico. Good job of power football, getting a hat on a hat and getting a running back that can run hard in there and get a first down for you. There are four or five on third down conversions here in the second half. Colorado State after that green carry, first down from the 43-yard line. Haney play action, the little roll, applies him plenty of time, steps up now, now he throws, and Anderson with an effort, did he make the catch? They say no, near side. Haney uh, didn't look like he knew what he wanted to do with it, finally threw the football. And he actually made a very good throw, and a veteran wide receiver in number four, Anderson, working back down the sideline to help his quarterback out. I don't think either official, the one in front of that player behind it, actually saw that very well. New Mexico was willing to call it out of bounds, but I'm not sure if he was in or not. It's a big game in the Mountain West Conference. Let's take a look at this. Let's see if we can see it right here at the end. Oh, man. Wow. Close. It looked like his right foot was in. So it's second and 10 from the 43-yard line. Late third quarter. New Mexico clinging to a two-point lead from the gun. Haney, plenty of time, rolling, looking, running, and he just steps out of bounds. And I, I will say one thing, the Rams offensive line is doing a great job giving Haney time back there. Yeah, that's a great point because most of the times when New Mexico has brought pressure, Colorado State has kept an extra tight end and it's called max protection. That time it wasn't even max protection and they still protected pretty well. Tui, the left end, finally uh, pushed him out of bounds. It's now third and 10 from the 43-yard line. And again, this is a situation the Lobos want to be in with their blitz scheme. Walker split to the top of the screen. Osborne and Anderson to the bottom. Haney takes the snap. Has time. Looks near side over the head of Anderson incomplete. The coverage was there, 
from Brandon Payne, the senior from Dayton, Texas, and they'll have to punt the football. It would have taken a, a perfect throw, but Anderson ran a decent route. Payne had very good coverage, and once again, Colorado State's offensive front blocked that pressure from New Mexico. Jeff Babcock, who's had a big day, had a low punt that was returned, but that 89-yarder, longest in school history. There's Daniel Ramirez, who's handled the punt return chores for the Lobos today. Babcock, a chance to pin him deep here. He hangs one high, spiraling kick. Ramirez is going to let it bounce inside the five and into the end zone. So the Lobos will have the football first down from their 20-yard line. Big game in the Mountain West Conference. The Rams trying to stay in second place in conference play and just uh, an important game uh, for Air Force and Wyoming, trying to establish a little confidence. How about the Cowboys? Yeah, no kidding. Air Force is struggling just a little bit, especially on defense, but to shut down the triple option like Wyoming is, they were, the last couple of weeks, Wyoming's running a rush defense was exposed a little bit. And all eyes on the Utes as they try to keep their season perfect in San Diego. Lobos at the 20-yard line. 28 seconds to go here, third quarter. Hand off. Moore. Shut down. No game. Atkins was in there. Nading also the defensive end. And Pauly has been all over the field. He also was a big part of that. And, they, and New Mexico was in their power formation. Again, double tight, big fullback, big running back, gigantic offensive line. And now we'll probably see, like, some provocative formation the next play. Three quarters in the books. McKinney has the four fingers up. That means the fourth quarter is here. 16-14, New Mexico in front of Colorado State. Dontrell Moore over 100 yards again for the Lobos. Walker, big touchdown catch, two-point game. Democrat. It's been entertaining thus far, and the fourth quarter is here in Fort Collins, Colorado, New Mexico, leading Colorado State 16 14. Lobos have the football facing a second and 10 from their 20 yard line. Kami, the sophomore from Artesia, New Mexico. The long count at the line of scrimmage. Now he'll run the option to the far side. Cuts it up across the 25 to the 26. We haven't seen him run the ball much, Kelly, but he is very quick. Outstanding speed on the wing. He's a legitimate 4-5 guy, and you have to account for the quarterback first when you run the option, and then just rally wide to Dontrell Moore into the sideline. The third and four coming up as you look at the numbers, and we thought New Mexico would focus on the run. Colorado State would like more of the rushing game being a factor. The turnovers, of course, the big story here in the second half. Third and short, handoff, more, and he has a first down. He needed the 30. He gets it to the 31. Tackled by Hall, who's been busy at that linebacker spot. New Mexico is really getting lathered up offensively. Those big guys up front are starting to play very physically. And you really, Colorado State needs something big to happen for them. Someone needs to step up, make a big play, get a takeaway, and get off the field. We talked about their size, 325, 328, 316, 339, 329 across the front. Then they have a tied in in Augustini at this 255. They have the ability to grind it out. They have a fresh set of downs now from the 31, setting up a screen, and it's incomplete. Basket, the intended receiver. Another high and wide one by McCamey, but Jason Nady, number 59 from his right defensive end position, had a lot to do with that. He kept, he kept his feet and got at the quarterback's feet just as he was wanting to throw that screen. McCamey, 0 for 12, passing the football. 0 for 7 in the second half. He has really struggled in that department. Did not look good on that throw. Second and 10 now. Yeah. 
Shotgun formation, the split backs next to him. Looking over the middle, throws, catch made for first down, and Basket trying to make something happen, and he does. Near sideline, he is room to roll. 20, 10, he takes it the distance. Touchdown, New Mexico. Hank Basket. Hank Basket, the junior from Clovis, who's the Mountain West Conference outdoor high jump champ, just his second touchdown this season. A huge one as he extends the Lobos lead. The coaching staff talked about Basket being a great athlete trying to become a good receiver, and I think he's getting there. But Anthony Carter, the other wide receiver for New Mexico, 87, had an absolutely tenacious block that sprang him for a decent play to a huge play that resulted in a touchdown. He had been successful in the passing game, but then they get a huge one. The extra point by Zunker is good, and that extends the Lobos' lead to nine points. Hank Basket, big, strong target, and a guy that uh, is a personable guy. They love him, great personality, but he just showed his athletic ability right there. It's not often you see a 6'4", 220 guy just run away from everybody. Five play, 80 yards, but when you get 69 of them in, in one play, it's a dig route, a nice accurate throw, just an in route, put it on his numbers, get your feet on the ground, and then look to do something with it. Watch the block right at the top of the screen, and then it actually knocked two Colorado State defenders into one another, resulting in a huge play at this point in time for New Mexico. Well, they talk about the receivers being great blockers. Carter involved in that uh, with the way they run the football they've got to be good blockers oh and the the coaching staff from new mexico actually went out on the field when basket got in the end zone and picked anthony carter up and started congratulating him it happened in the perfect spot right in front of your coaching staff so mckamey stepping up with the touchdown pass and that's the longest play allowed by the rams this season 69 yard strike that's hard to believe because they've allowed some big plays. You talk about playing at Colorado and USC and Minnesota. Yeah. There were some big plays in those games. 23 to 14, we've had big plays here. The Rams, the touchdown pass to Osborne in the first quarter. And New Mexico showing they can do more than just rush the football with a big touchdown pass to put them in front, 23-14. Sunker's kick fielded by Morton at the seven yard line. Right up the gut and out to the 23. Lack on the tackle for the Lobos. Well, they think this kid's getting better and better. Hard to believe he's just a sophomore. We talked a lot about Haney. This guy's got some good years ahead of him. Well, and he actually missed almost two games because of the concussion. The better part of two games and one entire football game, he didn't play at Air Force. And Dan Dodd talked about that, the offensive coordinator, of how valuable that, that game time would be today. And the, the key drive for him was a game-winning drive against Texas Tech. That really helped his confidence. Here's a handoff on first down. And not much for Jimmy Green. He lost yardage as the front was tough that time. Everoy Thompson leading the charge, the junior from Texas. Colorado State that time, Trey, tried to run a counter play where you have to pull linemen, and I think it would be the last running play I would choose against New Mexico's defense because what totally disrupts a counter play is penetration, and New Mexico's all about penetration defensively. Yeah, they're uh, and having the lead as well, second down and 12. The defense probably licking their chops a little bit here. Haney. Going to put it in the air, five-step drop, pressured, throws, what a catch made by Walker. Breaks a tackle, and he has a first down out to the 40-yard line. That was a great individual effort. First of all, Haney getting rid of the football under pressure, but then Walker breaking a couple of tackles, 18 yards. Well, from one freshman to another, and Colorado State needs some big plays to happen fairly quickly, and it's... Not often you can count on your freshmen to be doing it for you. Yeah, Spiegel and Brown were the guys that uh, could not wrap them up, and it's a first down at the 40. Well, that bodes well. We talked about how young this Colorado State team is. Six freshmen use this season. They only have seven seniors on the depth chart. One more. One more. Green in at the running back spot. Haney to the air again. Has some pressure backside. Airs it out deep downfield for Walker. Anderson also there, and it's incomplete. They ran into each other. 
inside the 15-yard line. And I think what happened is actually this throw was a little bit late, and so you have one post, and the in route on the other side turned into a post as well. And actually, it looks like somebody just flat ran the wrong route. You don't end up with two posts at the same time. Walker and Anderson both had a shot at it. Anderson will check out now. From the 40-yard line. Haney on second down, a flag is thrown. He'll option near side. Spiegel wraps him up after a short gain out to the 43-yard line. Couple flags. The near and far side of the field. Three fourteen, New Mexico looking for another win against the Rams. This one is procedure against Colorado yeah, you State. You can find this if you're New Mexico. Illegal formation, offense, number 87. Only six men on line scrimmage. Penalty decline, result of play, third down. And Haney didn't get much on that tray, and so you already have him in the third down and long distance that you want this young quarterback to have to try to do something out there. Yeah, it's still third and seven, so a uh, tough conversion here for Sonny Lubick's team. Third and seven from their 43. And yet again, another huge play that this freshman has to try to come up with. Walker and Anderson to the top. On the near side, it's Dustin Osborne. Haney from the gun, trying to deliver, has time over the middle, catch made by Osborne. He has a first down to the 35 and tripped up at the 32-yard line. Dustin Osborne has been big, the sophomore from La Hunna, Colorado. His big game this year, six catches, 122 against Minnesota, but uh, this may be his biggest game. And again, the in route that obviously Caleb Haney is comfortable throwing. He even had to feel the high shotgun snap, keep, kept his poise, and put it on the money. Good adjustment by Osborne at the end, and then a little yards after the catch on top of it. Watching the 11-minute mark. Lobos by nine points, and now two in the backfield for the Rams as Green will go in motion out of the backfield. Sperry's in the backfield. He's got the ball. He's going to throw it back to Haney incomplete. Corey Sperry, their freshman H-back, lined up as a running back, and he is a former quarterback. He was all Colorado out of Pueblo, Colorado. And this was a, I don't think he intended to drop this, but it was actually a good decision. Mr. Spiegel, number 89, is not fooled by this lick. He's right there saying, quarterback, why don't you catch that so I can get you right in the ear. Let's check in with Anne-Marie. Sperry used to be a quarterback. He also, for a time, was being recruited by the Rams basketball team, too. Sperry, who was a forward, first fell in love with Fort Collins when he attended basketball camp here every year since eighth grade. In his junior year, he went to football camp. They're excited about his future on second and long, airing it out for the end zone as Haney incomplete. He wanted Walker down the far sideline. Pretty good coverage. Josh Bazinet, the strong safety, was with him step for step. And there's Malone also in the vicinity. In a third and 10 situation, it's this is going to be a long field goal if they don't pick up anything else. But again, you don't want to make a mistake. You're still down by two scores. You need a field goal somewhere along the line anyway. So look at what they've done on third down. And that's four out of their last five. They were like two for seven in the first half. Third and 10 from the 31. It's a two-score game. That's the other thing to keep in mind here. They're in Babcock's range. Haney rolling right, away from pressure, sets up, throws, catch made, and a first down. There's a flag coming in late after the Haney throw. It's going to be roughing Haney again. Green the catch of the first down, and roughing will be tacked on as they roughed up the quarterback. I think that's going to be Kyle Coulter, number 96. Personal foul, roughing the passer, defense, number 96. Just half the team is Half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. I mean, it was a great throw, great catch. They already had the conversion, but you just have to lay off. You're costing your team. The ball's gone. You can take two steps and hit the quarterback. That's too far, especially hitting him from the blind side. That sets up Colorado State first and goal from the 10-yard line. Remember, it's Kyle Coulter that recovered that fumbled snap from right. Sam 
pelt a year ago that led to that winning field goal. Look at what they've done inside the 20 this season. Haney looking, pressured, throws. You just got rid of it. And there's a, what a lot of freshmen wouldn't do, just throw the ball away. Well, Dan Hammersmith went into that. One of the hardest things to teach a young quarterback is when to give up on a play. Because if you're competitive, and we've already seen that Haney is, you don't want to give up on a play. But that is a great decision. Sometimes as a quarterback, it's no play at all is the best play. Haney out of Corny, Texas. He threw for 28 touchdowns, just three interceptions as a senior. His family, football junkies. He's a football junkie. Big second and 10 here. Looking, backside pressure, he's hit. And they're gonna rule this a incomplete pass. Getting up and running with it was Marcus Parker, but Mike Mahorek, there he is, number 56, with that pressure to knock it out of his hand. And Fashola is coming off the edge as well. You have to understand, against New Mexico, you don't have time because of the pressure that they consistently bring off the edge. You have to understand that you're going to get it from backside if you stop and wait too long. They're 6 of 14 on third downs. Haney has gone deep to come up with some big conversions. This will be a third and goal from the 10-yard line. Walker and Anderson to the near side, Osborne to the top. Haney in the pocket, over the middle, Anderson to catch, and he cannot break the tackle of Fulbright, and he's dropped at the eight-yard line after a short game. Well, still though, a field goal here draws you within six from the Colorado State perspective. It's, it was a good drive for them. Well, from the perspective that it was a huge answer to that that 69-yard touchdown pass to Basquette. They needed, Colorado State needed to answer in some form. Babcock, senior from Tampa. Three for three from this distance in this range. This will be a 24-yarder. The kick on the way, and it's good. And we have a six-point game. Sonny Lubick's team with a solid drive. They get some points, and they're down by six. Here in Fort Collins, Colorado. Mexico in front of Colorado State, 23-17 after the Rams come up with a good drive that results in a Jeff Babcock field goal to draw within one score here with 9.36 to go. Kevin Walton and Marcus Smith, the tandem for the Lobos, awaiting this kick from Kevin Mark. This one hanging in the balance, key game in the Mountain West. And it's going to be Smith from the goal line to the 20, and knocked down at the 22-yard line. We talked in the open about how good Dontrell Moore is, and he's putting up one of those special days again, Kelly, rushing the football. Has gotten better, it seems, as the game goes on. You're right, and good running backs do that. And they do that for a couple of reasons. One, they're in shape to carry the load. And two, their offensive line is wearing out the defense. So the defense is getting weaker, and that makes the running back stronger. Time he's going to line up again as a wide receiver in that trips formation. D.D. Cox is in as running back standing next to McKamey in the backfield. And it's going to be Cox on the handoff. He fumbles the football at the 23. Do the Rams have it? They're going to say no. It appeared he lost the football. After a short gain, Cox getting a carry there. Let's take a look. We were just talking about Colorado State needing a big play. That might have been their opportunity right there. Atkins poked it free, but they say he was down. No, I think they said that um, New Mexico jumped on the football. I think New oh, Mexico think, recovered. Okay, they did recover then. At one point, that ball was like, definitely out. Yeah, it clearly was out, but it appeared at one point they were going to rule him down, but a big break that the Lobos keep the football on second and eight, and Moore is just blown up in the backfield. Atkins was in there. That's back-to-back -back plays he's been a big factor in. Yeah, and Cox goes in there and puts one on the ground, and guess who's in there to carry the ball next? Dontrell Moore, and I would expect it to be in his hands the rest of this football game. Well, they're keyed on uh, the running game now. Two carries, no yards. Well, we talked about McCamey's going to have to make some plays in the passing game. He did last series. He needs to do it right here on third and ten. 
Two backs next to McKamey, a three receiver set. The Rams fans backing their defense. McKamey looking near side, through the hands of Moore, incomplete. Herbert was in the vicinity and had a chance on the deflection there, and they'll have to punt the football. And that play wasn't going to get a first down anyway. Weak side blitz from Colorado State. They got enough pressure. He had to go to his outlet receiver, which was more right there. That one was high and wide, but it wasn't going to result in the conversion anyway. Tyler Goss standing at his seven-yard line. There's David Anderson, the dangerous one. As the punt returner for Colorado State, he's inside his 35. Rams a chance to take the lead to get the football back here. Trailing by only six points. Short kick. Anderson comes up on it on the 42, and he's knocked down at the 44-yard line. And a nice open field tackle by Marcus Smith. We'll take a break with 7.49 to go from Sonny Lubick Field. This one hanging in the balance. It's where the lights always shine. Team, the Lobos lead the Rams. We have a famous guy in our midst here in Fort Collins, Colorado, as we turn back the clock. You've got to be kidding me. Number 12, look at the poise in the pocket, the command of the huddle, and delivering strikes all over the football field. Kelly Stopper. And there he is. That was after we beat BYU, one of those highlights. Long time ago, it seems like, Trey. Time flies. I'm sure you had some great memories uh, coming back. Uh, you've been back here a few times, but uh, I'm sure it's special every time. There's a catch made by Walker, and he's dropped for a loss back to the 39. You uh, look pretty good in the, the green in uh, goal of Colorado State. Yeah, they've changed the colors, actually, since then. Now they're a Las Vegas gold and forest green, and I think that look right there looks a lot better than what you just saw on the screen. Well, you, you mentioned your connection with uh, Hammerschmidt, the offensive coordinator, and, of course, Sonny Lubick, and it's amazing. Since you were there, the success they've had. Oh, yeah, and it started when Sonny came back. He left to go to Stanford, ended up at Miami as a defensive coordinator. When he came back, things changed drastically. Second and 15 after the loss on the catch by Walker as we hit the seven-minute mark here. Big drive here for the Rams. Haney in trouble. He's going to take off for the football. Midfield, and he rams forward close to the first down. He needed to get to the 46, and he's going to be close. It's going to be a third and short, it appears. A lot of times, New Mexico ends up in man-to-man -man defense. Quarterback has a lot of room. If you can scramble, it's like the parting of the Red Sea because all the defenders have run out of there covering tight ends and wide receivers. Good heads-up play. Sonny Lubick Field is the site. Hughes Stadium, New Mexico, Colorado State, and the key Mountain West Conference game. The Rams coming in 2-1 and one in conference play, trying to move to 3-1 and one and stay right behind Utah. New Mexico has a chance to move to 3-2 and two in conference and improve their overall record to 5-4. and four. Big third and short. Handoff straight ahead. Green, and he has a first down. Inside the 45-yard line. Power football that time, and they get it done. You know, going back to that highlight of me throwing the football, our producer, Luke Cussero, is yes. from here. And he was one of those juvenile delinquents that were throwing <laughs> beer and hot dogs at us in the stands. Hey, he has a lot of fans in this area. I've been talking to a few of them. He is well known here in the front range. Scott Barkey, the director, they've done a great job here. And we anticipated this being a close game and has not disappointed. First down from the 44-yard line. Handoff green, up the middle, inside the 40, down to the 35-yard line. Running between the tackles successfully. We haven't seen a lot of that today. We haven't seen hardly any of it, but it's because of the success that Colorado State has had throwing the football. Throw the football well, and it takes pressure. It loosens up the defense, and then you can get that zone run going. Colorado State is no slouch at running the football either. When, when Holland was playing, I think they relied a little bit too much on the pass because he is just so good throwing the football down the field. I think with Haney, they're finding their running game once again. With most of those rushing yards on this drive. Holland, of course, broken ankle, played six games, big loss, but Haney's done a nice job stepping in. Couldn't ask much more from a freshman. On second and short, green, and it looks like he has the first down inside the 34-yard line. And it's just smash mouth football here. This is what you expect to see most of the time from New Mexico. 
Well, Colorado State is very big up front. They're very good at the center and tackle positions. Their guards have had to kind of learn on the run. They're young at their guard position with Day and, and uh, Oldenburg. But they're starting to get it going. But one thing you have to do is count on and be patient with the run and give that offensive line an opportunity to get it going. He appeared to clearly have the first down, but they're going to bring the sticks out. <laughs> first down by the nose of the football. He clearly had it by, <laughs> by the strike. But that's where Green is effective, too. Between the tackles, running north and south, running downhill. You can see Haney. I mean, look at those passing numbers. Rushing, I mean, he's not going to run the football. He had the good run on the scramble just a minute ago. But if he can be effective throwing, their running game will be effective because of that. Clearly his best game passing at 167 in his first start against Wyoming, 115 against San Diego State. Big pass plays here today. First down from the 34-yard line. Haney play action. Rolling right, doubled, two guys after him, throws downfield incomplete. And he appeared to just throw that out of bounds. Anderson was down there, but wasn't going to get to the football. And it was just one of, another one of those really good decisions. There was nothing there. Play action, boot, he gets outside, has a good clean look at it. And you have one, you have really three receivers at three different levels, deep, medium, and short, covered perfectly by New Mexico. Throw it to a cheerleader and line up on second down. Osborne's been the big play guy for Sonny Lubick. Anderson's been a big play guy. We haven't seen Dreesen come up with a big play. Maybe this is the time. Second and 10 from the 34. Haney looking. Tipped, intercepted by Brandon Payne. He takes it down the far sideline and finally tackled by Haney inside the 40. Anderson is down. After the deflection, Payne was in the right place at the right time. His fifth pick, he's the Mountain West Conference leader in that category. And what Colorado State was doing is running a crossing route. You can see number four, Anderson, but they were expecting to get man-to-man -man defense, and they got zoned. And number four, Anderson just got blown up. A big time turnover as New Mexico has the football after the 32 yard interception return. <laughs> Cornerback Brandon Payne with an interception off the deflection off the hand of David Anderson, setting up the Lobos in great shape with four and a half minutes to go. It appeared Colorado State was driving for the go ahead score. And the Lobos, who are so good at taking the ball away, 21 takeaways, second in the nation in that category. They get a big one. First down from the 38 now. And the New Mexico offense on the field. McKamey, straight ahead, Moore. Short yardage to the 35. Let's take a look at the Mountain West Conference standings, the importance of this one. You can see what it would mean for the Rams to get a victory, staying a game back of Utah and with BYU. Important for New Mexico. They got a chance to get their fifth win here. You're right, and they got to get bowl eligible, and then those three bowls that this conference is tied to. Obviously, everyone's shooting for a, a showdown with Utah. Utah already beat New Mexico, so they don't have a shot at it. But look at BYU, Colorado State, if they can pull this off. Air Force is still in the hunt. Yeah, it's been a great race. Second and seven from the 35. Handoff. Nothing there. Up the middle for D.D. Cox. It'll be third down and long. Let's take a look now at the Cooper Tire defensive player of the game, and I don't think this is a big surprise. Big time to come up with a big play. You know, and he leads the country in pass breakups coming into this game, and he did a great job on that play. Right play, right time. Timeout is called here with 3.43 to go in this one. New Mexico up six with the football. The roll, 23-17 New Mexico, third and seven for the Lobos at the Colorado State 35-yard line. Rams need a stop. They'd like to force a long field goal here, keep this a one-score game. Shotgun formation for Cole McCamey and company. Time in the pocket. Pump fakes, now takes off. He gets a couple yards and that's it. Great play from the backside that time from Colorado State, Terrence Carter, the junior from Topeka, Kansas. It will set up a fourth down. Now the question is, do you bring the kicking team out there if you're Rocky Long? I think you have to. 
what are your what are your other options here? It's going to be a long field goal, but well, you set up the Rams in great shape if you can't make the field goal. Yeah, Wes Wes Dunker is this is his reputation right here. He's hit some big field goals in his time, and you get him on the field and you make him come through. That's what he's there for. Now the wind is against him a little bit. It's blowing in from the south just a tad, but you mentioned it. He's first team All Mountain West. He's nailed a 46, 21 yarder. Missed a kick from 48. But this guy's one of the best. Senior from New Braunfels, Texas. Good use of timeouts, I think, by Colorado State right there. They used two of them. Too much time would have gone off the clock. And plus, you have a good opportunity to set up whatever your best field goal block play is. Zunker will try to make this a nine-point game. This will be a 50-yarder. The key the is hole. to get pressure up the middle because long field goals tend to be low. McKamey the holder. Stationed in the middle of the field. Kick on the way from Zucker. Plenty of leg, and the kick is good. And that is a big boost to the Lobos here with 3.26 to go. Yeah, it really doesn't get much bigger than that. A little over 50 yards. This is defensive coordinator Steve Stenard. His defense did what it was supposed to do. The offense put him in a bad place once again with the tip ball turnover. His defense held him for a long field goal, and Zunker just came through. 50-yarder, four field goals for Zunker, and Rocky Long now has the luxury of knowing he's up nine points. A score does not beat him here. Still 326 to go, but you mentioned it. No timeouts for Colorado yeah, State. Yeah, Colorado State had to use both of their timeouts. They burned one earlier in this half, and they just used the, the other two. But remember, the clock stops on first downs in college football. They'll have that, but basically you have to work the sidelines. But let's not forget, we're talking about a freshman quarterback that now has to go get a quick score using the hurry-up offense. Zunker now 11 out of 14 on the year after the four field goals. And there's a look at Haney, and he will be a marked man. I mean, this is tough for a freshman knowing you're behind. Uh, they talk about Elway and the, the, the great guys that come up with big drives. He's going to be asked to come up with two big drives to pull this one out of the fire. Well, and it will be great experience for him somewhere down the line, but it's a tough situation today based on his maturity and experience. Sunker to kick it away with the Lobos up by nine. Short kick. Well, Sunker helps him out by kicking bounds. that out of bounds. Boy, that really helps Haney and companies. Odds here, they'll start from the 35. We have a flag on the play. It, I mean, Zunker really helped Colorado State out, if the, unless this is against them. Free kick out of bound, number 30 there kicking team. Colorado State is allowed to take the ball at the 35-yard line. First down. So Zunker, as good as he has been, that is a, a big negative there. First down from the 35 for the Rams. Three receivers. They need a touchdown and a field goal with only 3.26 on the clock. Haney, plenty of time over the middle. Anderson, first down and more. 40. And he's not out of bounds by New Mexico inside the 35-yard line. Every time they throw his way, with the exception of the tip ball that was behind him, he has been affected 33 yards there. Well, a lot of times receivers get big plays on in routes, and then they come out the backside. Good throw in traffic over a defender, and then it's coming out that backside where Anderson is very good at getting yards after the catch. Stops the clock with 3.18 to go. Anderson and Walker to the near side, Osborne to the top of the screen. Six catches now for Anderson. Haney pressured in the pocket, in trouble, and he's going to be dropped back at the 37. Nick Spiegel was in there on the initial charge. And all the while, the clock obviously is continuing to tick. Now three minutes remaining in this one at Fort Collins. Sonny Lubick's team coming in, playing so well, coming off the victory over Wyoming. They've had moments here. Backside pressure, and Haney's hit and dropped. And that was 
Fala Fashola, the speedy linebacker. He's a senior, very vocal, emotional leader, has great speed at that position. Watch 33 Fashola at the top on the edge. Colorado State knew this going in. They, New Mexico always pressures off the edge. That's his fourth sack of the year. And a loss of big time loss. It's now third town and 25 for Haney. Has all kinds of time. Throws underneath to Anderson to the 41. Well short of the first down. They're still going to have a fourth down and about 20 yards to go. Fulbright on the tackle. And the reason why Fashola was so free is they overload the opposite side so there just isn't enough offensive linemen to protect the edge away from the flag fourth and 18 to have any chance they got to convert right here haney looking incomplete on walker and that's going to do it they will turn it over on downs with 147 to go no timeouts and the lobos are going to come into fort collins and come up with a huge victory Fans leaving here, disappointing. Uh, second straight year they've lost to New Mexico. And Sonny Lubick, uh, it's been the Dontrell Moore story the last couple of years. It really has. The Dontrell Moore story, but also this game was about which team could play the cleanest. And it wasn't Colorado State today. They came out and absolutely botched the game in every way to start this second half. And they gave this New Mexico team the window of opportunity they were looking for. 147 to go, and they're going to put the cap on this one as Moore celebrating with D.D. Cox and that offense that seemed to get better. They, they came up with uh, some key turnovers and cashed in, but their running game really improved in the second half. McKinney is knocked down at the 34-yard line. Let's take a look at our Outback Steakhouse outstanding back of the game. And it's Dontrell Moore with 154 yards. Over 200 last year against the Rams. 154 on the ground today. Look at those numbers. <laughs> yeah, those are amazing. Now that's about probably 25% of his yards in his entire career came against Colorado State. And we mentioned Mount West Conference career rushing leader, All-America candidate. How can you argue? I mean, you'd yeah, have you, to say one of the top running backs in the country with the numbers he puts up. And McKamey's just going to take a knee back at the 24-yard line with under a minute to go now. The only reason that you would argue about that, Trey, is that it, you don't get to see him very often. And that happens with a lot of those so-called experts. But this guy right here, Anderson, is a competitor. He'll come back. He won't allow this team to quit. He will continue to play hard. And basically what Colorado State has to do now is run the table. They go to Salt Lake City next week to play Utah. They go to um, Air Force after that. Yep. So, I mean, they have their work cut out for them. But, you know, they, they're going to have to have a huge effort a week from now against a very good Utah team. And New Mexico, you got to start talking about the Lobos a little bit more now at BYU and then Wyoming at home. Yeah. So they got a chance to finish strong. At BYU is going to be a huge game because BYU is really in a great position right now. They're playing very well, first of all, but they also have Utah the last game of the year. 26 to 17, the final score here at Fort Collins. Rocky Long's team beating Sonny Lubick's team. A big road victory for the Lobos as they improve their overall record to five and four. They're now three and two in the conference. Colorado State falls to three and five, two and two in conference play. Nick Spiegel had a big game defensively and the rushing attack was impressive. Here's Amory Anderson with Rocky Long. Coach, in the second half offensively, your team, t team came alive. What was the spark? Well, I, we were just doing the same things we did the first half. We just executed better. And I, I think the big pass play that went for a touchdown probably was the biggest play in the game. It, it got us a little momentum, and then the defense hung in there, and we won the game. You capitalized on some turnovers as well. You said coming into this game, you put more pressure on your corners than anybody else in the league. How is it that time and time again they come up with the big play? Well, I don't know. They made a big play at the end of the game. I, I thought they got uh, – they didn't cover very well most of the game. I, I thought we gave up some long – third and long situations where they completed some balls when we were in man-to-man -man coverage. Now, they made a big play at the end that helped us win it, but we got to play better coverage than that. Defensively, you're, some people have called you a genius. What is, I know, what is it on, on today's game that you saw defensively that you did like? 
Well, our players, I'm really proud of our players on both offense and defense. What we are is not very talented, but we play extremely hard. And, and I thought the players hung in there when things weren't going very well, and they just kept playing hard enough to make some plays, and we won the game. Thanks very much, Coach. Thank you. Trey, back to you. Thank you, Anne-Marie. Rocky Long's had some big wins this year. He beat Texas Tech, and he gets a huge road win in conference play over Colorado State. Back after this.